This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Corrie Samuel. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Inferno, Canto One. Midway upon the journey of our life, I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah me, how hard a thing it is to say, what was this forest, savage, rough, and stern, which in the very thought renews the fear. So bitter is it, death is little more. But of the good to treat, which there I found, Speak will I of the other things I saw there. I cannot well repeat how there I entered. So full was I of slumber at the moment in which I had abandoned the true way. But after I had reached a mountain's foot, at that point where the valley terminated, which had with consternation pierced my heart, upward I looked, and I beheld its shoulders, vested already with that planet's rays, which leadeth others right by every road. Then was the fear a little quieted, that in my heart's lake had endured throughout the night which I had passed so piteously. And even as he who, with distressful breath, forth issued from the sea upon the shore, turns to the water perilous and gazes, so did my soul, that still was fleeing onward, turn itself back to re-behold the pass, which never yet a living person left. After my weary body I had rested, the way resumed I on the desert slope, so that the firm foot ever was the lower. And lo, almost where the ascent began, a panther, light and swift exceedingly, which with a spotted skin was covered o'er, and never moved she from before my face, Nay, rather did impede so much my way, That many times I to return had turned. The time was the beginning of the morning, And up the sun was mounting with those stars, That with him were, what time the love divine, At first in motion set those beauteous things. So were to me occasion of good hope, The variegated skin of that wild beast, The hour of time, and the delicious season, but not so much that did not give me fear, a lion's aspect which appeared to me. He seemed as if against me he were coming, with head uplifted, and with ravenous hunger, so that it seemed the air was afraid of him, and a she-wolf, that with all hungerings seemed to be laden in her meagerness, and many folk has caused to live forlorn. She brought upon me so much heaviness, with the affright that from her aspect came, that I the hope relinquished of the height. And as he is who willingly acquires, and the time comes that causes him to lose, who weeps in all his thoughts, and is despondent, e'en such made me that beast withouten peace, which, coming on against me by degrees, thrust me back thither where the sun is silent. While I was rushing downward to the lowland, Before mine eyes did one present himself, Who seemed from long continued silence hoarse. When I beheld him in the desert vast, Have pity on me, unto him I cried, Which e'er thou art, or shade, or real man. He answered me, Not man, man once I was, And both my parents were of Lombardy, and Mantuans by country both of them. Sub Julio was I born, though it was late, and lived at Rome under the good Augustus, during the time of false and lying gods. A poet was I, and I sang that just, son of Anchises, who came forth from Troy, after that Ilion the Superb was burned. But thou, whyest go thou back to such annoyance, why climbst thou not the Mount Delectable, which is the source and cause of every joy? Now, 
Art thou that Virgilus, and that fountain which spreads abroad so wide a river of speech? I made response to him, with bashful forehead. Oh, of the other poets, honour and light, avail me the long study and great love that have impelled me to explore thy volume. Thou art my master, and my author thou, thou art alone the one from whom I took, the beautiful style that has done honour to me. Behold the beast, for which I have turned back, do thou protect me from her, famous sage, for she doth make my veins and pulses tremble. Thee it behooves to take another road, responded he, when he beheld me weeping, if from this savage place thou wouldst escape, because this beast, at which thou criest out, suffers not any one to pass her way, but so doth harass him that she destroys him, and has a nature so malign and ruthless, that never doth she glut her greedy will, and after food is hungrier than before. Many the animals with whom she weds, and more they shall be still, until the greyhound comes, who shall make her perish in her pain. He shall not feed on either earth or pelf, but upon wisdom, and on love and virtue. Twixt Feltro and Feltro shall his nation be. Of that low Italy shall he be the saviour, on whose account the maid Camilla died. Euryalus, Turnus, Nisus of their wounds. Through every city shall he hunt her down, till he shall have driven her back to hell. There from whence envy first did let her loose. Therefore I think, and judge it for thy best, thou follow me, and I will be thy guide, and lead thee hence through the eternal place. Where thou shalt hear the desperate lamentations, shall see the ancient spirits disconsolate, who cry out each one for the second death. And thou shalt see those who contented are, within the fire, because they hope to come, whene'er it may be, to the blessed people. To whom, then, if thou wishest to ascend, a soul shall be for that, the nigh more worthy, with her at my departure I will leave thee. Because that emperor who reigns above, in that I was rebellious to his law, wills that through me none come into his city. He governs everywhere, and there he reigns, there is his city and his lofty throne. Oh, happy he whom thereto he elects. And I to him? Poet, I thee entreat, by that same God whom thou didst never know, that I may escape this woe and worse. Thou wouldst conduct me there, where thou hast said, that I may see the portal of St. Peter, and those thou makest so disconsolate. Then he moved on, and I behind him followed. End of Canto 1 Inferno, Canto 2 Day was departing, and the embrowned air released the animals that are on earth from their fatigues, and I the only one made myself ready to sustain the war, both of the way and likewise of the woe, which memory that errs not shall retrace. O muses, O high genius, now assist me, O memory, that didst write down what I saw, here thy nobility shall be manifest. And I began, Poet, who guidest me, regard my manhood, if it be sufficient, ere to the arduous pass thou dost confide me. Thou sayest, that of Silvius the parent, while yet corruptible, unto the world immortal went, and was there bodily. But if the adversary of all evil was courteous, thinking of the high effect that issue would from him, and who, and what, to men of intellect unmeet it seems not. For he was of great Rome, and of her empire, in the imperial heaven as father chosen, the which and what, wishing to speak the truth, was established as the holy place, wherein sits the successor of the greatest Peter. A 
Upon this journey, whence thou givest him vaunt, Things did he hear, which the occasion were, Both of his victory and the papal mantle. Thither went afterwards the chosen vessel, To bring back comfort thence unto that faith, Which of salvation's way is the beginning. But I, why thither come, or who concedes it? I not Aeneas am, I am not Paul, Nor I, nor others think me worthy of it. Therefore, if I resign myself to come, I fear the coming may be ill-advised. Thou art wise, and knowest better than I speak. And as he is, who unwills what he willed, And by new thoughts doth his intention change, So that from his design he quite withdraws, Such I became, on that dark hillside, Because, in thinking, I consumed the emprise, which was so very prompt in the beginning. "'If I have well thy language understood,' replied that shade of the magnanimous, "'thy soul attainted is with cowardice, which many times a man encumbers so, it turns him back from honoured enterprise, as false sight doth a beast when he is shy. That thou mayest free thee from this apprehension, I'll tell thee why I came, and what I heard, at the first moment when I grieved for thee. Among those was I who are in suspense, and a fair, saintly lady called to me. In such wise I besought her to command me. Her eyes were shining brighter than the star, and she began to say, gentle and low, with voice angelical, in her own language, O spirit, courteous of Mantua, of whom the fame still in the world endures, and shall endure, long-lasting as the world. A friend of mine, and not the friend of fortune, upon the desert slope is so impeded upon his way that he is turned through terror, and may, I fear, already be so lost that I too late have risen to his succour. From that which I have heard of him in heaven, bestir thee now, and with thy speech ornate, and with what needful is for his release, assist him so, that I may be consoled. Beatrice am I, who do bid thee go, I come from there, where I would fain return, love moved me, which compelleth me to speak. When I shall be in presence of my Lord, full often will I praise thee unto him. Then paused she, and thereafter I began, O lady of virtue, thou alone through whom the human race exceedeth all, contained within the heaven that has the lesser circles. So grateful unto me is thy commandment, to obey if twere already done were late. No farther needst thou ope to me thy wish. But the cause tell me why thou dost not shun the here descending down into this centre, from the vast place thou burnest to return to. Since thou wouldst fain so inwardly discern, briefly will I relate, she answered me, why I am not afraid to enter here. Of those things only should one be afraid, which have the power of doing others harm. Of the rest, no, because they are not fearful. God in his mercy such created me, that misery of yours attains me not, nor any flame assails me of this burning. A gentle lady is in heaven, who grieves at this impediment to which I send thee, so that stern judgment there above is broken. In her entreaty she besought Lucia, and said, Thy faithful one now stands in need of thee, and unto thee I recommend him. Lucia, foe of all that cruel is, hastened away, and came unto the place where I was sitting with the ancient Rachel. Beatrice, said she, the true praise of God, why succourest thou not him, who loved thee so? For thee he issued from the vulgar herd. Dost thou not hear the pity of his plaint? Dost thou not see the death that combats him? Beside that flood where ocean has no vaunt. Never were persons in the world so swift 
to work their weal and to escape their woe, as I, after such words as these were uttered, came hither downward from my blessed seat, confiding in thy dignified discourse, which honours thee, and those who've listened to it. After she thus had spoken unto me, weeping her shining eyes she turned away, whereby she made me swifter in my coming. And unto thee I came, as she desired, I have delivered thee from that wild beast, which barred the beautiful mountain's short ascent. What is it, then? Why, why dost thou delay? Why is such baseness bedded in thy heart? Daring, and hardihood, why hast thou not? Seeing that three such ladies, Benedite, are caring for thee in the court of heaven, and so much good my speech doth promise thee, even as the flowerets, by nocturnal chill, bowed down and closed, when the sun whitens them, uplift themselves all open on their stems. Such I became with my exhausted strength, and such good courage to my heart there coursed, that I began, like an intrepid person. Oh, she compassionate who succoured me, and courteous thou, who hast obeyed so soon, the words of truth which she addressed to thee. Thou hast my heart so with desire disposed to the adventure with these words of thine, that to my first intent I have returned. Now go, for one sole will is in us both, thou leader, and thou lord, and master thou. Thus said I to him, and when he had moved, I entered on the deep and savage way. End of Canto 2 Inferno, Canto 3 Through me the way is to the city dolent, Through me the way is to eternal dole, Through me the way among the people lost. Justice incited my sublime Creator, Created me divine omnipotence, The highest wisdom and the primal love. Before me there were no created things, Only a turn, and I eternal last. All hope abandon, ye who enter in. These words in sombre colour I beheld written upon the summit of a gate, Whence I, their sense is, master, hard to me, And he to me, as one experienced. Here all suspicion needs must be abandoned, all cowardice must needs be here extinct. We to the place have come, Where I have told thee, Thou shalt behold the people dolorous, Who have forgone the good of intellect. And after he had laid his hand on mine, With joyful mien, Whence I was comforted, He led me in among the secret things. There, sighs, complaints, and ululations loud resounded through the air without a star, whence I, at the beginning, wept thereat. Languages diverse, horrible dialects, accents of anger, words of agony, and voices high and hoarse with sound of hands, made up a tumult that goes whirling on, for ever in that air, for ever black even as the sand doth when the whirlwind breathes. And I, who had my head with horror bound, said, Master, what is this which now I hear? What folk is this which seems by pain so vanquished? And he to me, This miserable mode maintain the melancholy souls of those who lived without an infamy or praise. Commingled are they, with that caitiff choir of angels who have not rebellious been, nor faithful were to God, but were for self. The heavens expelled them, not to be less fair, nor them the nethermore abyss receives, for glory none the damned world would have from them. And I, O master, what so grievous is to these that maketh them lament so sore? He answered, I will tell thee very briefly. These have no longer any hope of death, and this blind life of theirs is so debased, 
they envious are of every other fate. No fame of them the world permits to be. Misericord and justice both disdain them. Let us not speak of them, but look and pass. And I, who looked again, beheld a banner, which whirling round ran on so rapidly, that of all pause it seemed to me indignant. And after it there came so long a train of people, that I ne'er would have believed that ever death so many had undone. When some among them I had recognized, I looked, and I beheld the shade of him who made through cowardice the great refusal. Forthwith I comprehended, and was certain, that this the sect was, of the caitiff wretches, hateful to God and to his enemies. These miscreants, who never were alive, were naked, and were stung exceedingly by gadflies and by hornets that were there. These did their faces irrigate with blood, which, with their tears commingled, at their feet by the disgusting worms was gathered up. And when to gazing farther I betook me, people I saw on a great river's bank, whence said I, Master, now vouchsafe to me, that I may know who these are, and what law makes them appear so ready to pass over, as I discern athwart the dusky light. And he to me, these things shall all be known to thee as soon as we our footsteps stay upon the dismal shore of Asheron. Then, with mine eyes ashamed and downward cast, fearing my words might irksome be to him, from speech refrained I till we reached the river. And lo, towards us coming in a boat, an old man, hoary with the hair of eld, crying, Woe unto ye, ye souls depraved! Hope never more to look upon the heavens. I come to lead you to the other shore, To the eternal shades in heat and frost. And thou, that yonder standest, Living soul, withdraw thee from these people who are dead. But when he saw that I did not withdraw, he said, By other ways, by other ports, Thou to the shore shalt come, not here for passage, A lighter vessel needs must carry thee. And unto him the guide, Vex thee not, Charon, It is so willed where there is power to do, That which is willed, and farther question not. Thereat were quieted the fleecy cheeks, Of him the ferryman of the livid fen, Who round his eyes had wheels of flame. But all those souls who weary were, and naked, their colour changed, and gnashed their teeth together, as soon as they had heard those cruel words. God they blasphemed, and their progenitors, the human race, the place, the time, the seed of their engendering and of their birth. Thereafter altogether they drew back, bitterly weeping to the accursed shore, which waiteth every man who fears not God. Charon the demon, with the eyes of gleed, beckoning to them, collects them all together, beats with his oar whoever lags behind. As in the autumn time the leaves fall off, first one and then another, till the branch unto the earth surrenders all its spoils. In similar wise the evil seed of Adam throw themselves from that margin, one by one, at signals, as a bird unto its lure. So they depart, across the dusky wave, and ere upon the other side they land, again on this side a new troop assembles. My son, the courteous master said to me, all those who perish in the wrath of God, here meet together out of every land, and ready are they to pass o'er the river, because celestial justice spurs them on, so that their fear is turned into desire. This way there never passes a good soul. And hence, if Charon doth complain of thee, well mayest thou know now what his speech imports. This being finished, all the dusk's champagne trembled so violently 
that of that terror the recollection bathes me still with sweat. The land of tears gave forth a blast of wind, and fulminated a vermilion light, which overmastered me in every sense. And, as a man whom sleep hath seized, I fell. End of Canto 3 Inferno Canto 4 Broke the deep lethargy within my head, A heavy thunder, So that I upstarted, Like to a person who by force is wakened. And round about I moved my rested eyes, Uprisen erect, And steadfastly I gazed, To recognise the place wherein I was. True is it, That upon the verge I found me, Of the abysmal valley dolorous, That gathers thunder of infinite ululations. Obscure, profound it was, and nebulous, So that by fixing on its depths my sight Nothing whatever I discerned therein. Let us descend now into the blind world, Began the poet, pallid utterly. I will be first, and thou shalt second be. And I, who of his colour was aware, Said, How shall I come, if thou art afraid, who at want to be a comfort to my fears. And he to me, The anguish of the people who are below here, In my face depicts that pity for which terror thou hast taken. Let us go on, for the long way impels us. Thus he went in, and thus he made me enter, The foremost circle that surrounds the abyss. There, as it seemed to me from listening, were lamentations none, but only sighs, that tremble made the everlasting air. And this arose from sorrow, without torment, which the crowds had, that many were and great, of infants, and of women, and of men. To me the master good, thou dost not ask what spirits these, which thou beholdest are? Now will I have thee know, ere thou go farther, that they sinned not, and if they merit had, tis not enough, because they had not baptism, which is the portal of the faith thou holdest. And if they were before Christianity, in the right manner they adored not God, and among such as these am I myself. For such defects, and not for other guilt, lost are we, and are only so far punished that without hope we live on in desire. Great grief seized on my heart when this I heard, because some people of much worthiness I knew, who in that limbo were suspended. Tell me, my master, tell me, thou, my lord, began I, with desire of being certain of that faith which overcometh every error. Came any one by his own merit hence, or by another's, who was blessed thereafter. And he, who understood my covert speech, replied, I was a novice in this state, when I saw hither come a mighty one, with sign of victory in coronate. Hence he drew forth the shade of the first parent, and that of his son Abel, and of Noah, of Moses the lawgiver, and the obedient Abraham patriarch, and David, king, Israel with his father and his children, and Rachel, for whose sake he did so much, and others many, and he made them blessed, and thou must know that earlier than these never were any human spirits saved. We ceased not to advance, because he spake, but still were passing onward through the forest. The forest, say I, of thick-crowded ghosts. Not very far, as yet, our way had gone, this side the summit, when I saw a fire that overcame a hemisphere of darkness. We were a little distant from it still, but not so far that I in part discerned not that honourable people held that place. O thou, who honourest every art and science, who may these be, which such great honour have, that from the fashion of the rest it parts them. And he to me, 
the honourable name that sounds of them above there in thy life wins grace in heaven that so advances them. In the meantime, a voice was heard by me. All honour be to the preeminent poet. His shade returns again that was departed. After the voice had ceased, and quiet was, four mighty shades I saw approaching us. Semblance had they, nor sorrowful, nor glad. To say to me, began my gracious master, him with that falchion in his hand behold, who comes before the three, even as their lord. That one is Homer, poet sovereign. He who comes next is Horace, the satirist. The third is Ovid, and the last is Lucan. Because to each of these with me applies, the name that solitary voice proclaimed, they do me honour, and in that do well. Thus I beheld assemble the fair school of that lord of the song preeminent, who o'er the others like an eagle soars. When they together had discoursed somewhat, they turned to me with signs of salutation, and on beholding this my master smiled, and more of honour still, much more they did me, in that they made me one of their own band, so that the sixth was I, midst so much wit. Thus we went on, as far as to the light, things saying tis becoming to keep silent, as was the saying of them where I was. We came unto a noble castle's foot, seven times encompassed with lofty walls, defended round by a fair rivulet. This we passed over, even as firm ground. Through portal seven I entered with these sages. We came into a meadow of fresh verdure. People were there with solemn eyes, and slow, of great authority in their countenance. They spake but seldom, and with gentle voices. Thus we withdrew ourselves upon one side, into an opening luminous and lofty, so that they, all of them, were visible. There opposite, upon the green enamel, were pointed out to me the mighty spirits, whom to have seen I feel myself exalted. I saw Electra, with companions many, mongst whom I knew both Hector and Aeneas, Caesar in armour with gerfalcon eyes. I saw Camilla and Penthesilia on the other side, and saw the King Latinus, who with Lavinia his daughter sat. I saw that Brutus, who drove Tarquin forth, Lucretia, Julia, Marcia, and Cornelia, and saw alone, apart, the Saladin. When I had lifted up my brows a little, the master I beheld, of those who know, sit with his philosophic family. All gaze upon him, and all do him honour. There I beheld both Socrates and Plato, who nearer him before the others stand. Democritus, who puts the world on chance, Diogenes, Anaxagoras, and Thales, Zeno, Empedocles, and Heraclitus. Of qualities I saw the good collector, Height Discorides, and Orpheus saw I, Tully, and Livy, and Moral Seneca, Euclid, Geometrician, and Ptolemy, Galen, Hippocrates, and Avicenna, Averroes, who the great comment made. I cannot all of them portray in full, because so drives me onward the long theme, that many times the word comes short of fact. The sixfold company, in two divides, another way my sapient guide conducts me, forth from the quiet to the air that trembles, and to a place I come where nothing shines. End of Canto 4 Inferno, Canto 5 Thus I descended out of the first circle, down to the second, that less space begirds, and so much greater dole that goads to wailing. There standeth Minos horribly and snarls, examines the transgressions at the entrance, judges, and sends accordingly as he girds him. 
I say, that when the spirit evil-born cometh before him, holy it confesses, and this discriminator of transgressions seeth what place in hell is meet for it, girds himself with his tail as many times as grades he wishes it should be thrust down. Always before him many of them stand. They go by turns, each one unto the judgment. They speak, and hear, and then are downward hurled. O thou, that to this dolorous hostelry comest, said Minos to me, when he saw me, leaving the practice of so great an office, Look how thou enterest, and in whom thou trustest. Let not the portal's amplitude deceive thee. And unto him, my guide, why criest thou too? Do not impede his journey fate ordained. It is so willed there, where there is power to do, that which is willed, and ask no further question. And now begin the dolesome notes to grow audible unto me. Now I am come there where much lamentation strikes upon me. I came into a place mute of all light, which bellows, as the sea does in a tempest, if by opposing winds tis combated. The infernal hurricane that never rests hurtles the spirits onwards in its rapine, whirling them round, and smiting it molests them. When they arrive before the precipice, there are the shrieks, the plaints, and the laments. There they blaspheme the poissons divine. I understand that unto such a torment the carnal malefactors were condemned, who reason subjugate to appetite. And as the wings of starlings bear them on, in the cold season, in large band and full, so doth that blast the spirit's maledict. It hither, thither, Downward, upward, drives them. No hope doth comfort them for evermore, Not of repose, but even of lesser pain. And as the cranes go, chanting forth their lays, Making in air a long line of themselves, So saw I coming, uttering lamentations, Shadows borne onward by the aforesaid stress. Whereupon said I, Master, who are those people, whom the black air so castigates. The first of those, of whom intelligence thou fain wouldst have, then said he unto me, the empress was of many languages. To sensual vices she was so abandoned, that lustful she made licit in her law, to remove the blame to which she had been led. She is Semiramis, of whom we read, that she succeeded Ninus, and was his spouse, she held the land, which now the sultan rules. The next is she who killed herself for love, and broke faith with the ashes of Sichaeus, then Cleopatra the voluptuous. Helen, I saw, for whom so many ruthless seasons revolved, and saw the great Achilles, who at the last hour combated with love. Paris, I saw, Tristan, and more than a thousand shades did he name and point out with his finger, whom love had separated from our life. After that I had listened to my teacher, naming the dames of eld and cavaliers, pity prevailed, and I was nigh bewildered. And I began, O poet, willingly speak would I to those two, who go together, and seem upon the wind to be so light. And he to me, Thou'lt mark, when they shall be nearer to us, and then do thou implore them by love which leadeth them, and they will come. Soon as the wind in our direction sways them, my voice uplift I. O oh, ye weary souls, come speak to us, if no one interdicts it. As turtle doves, called onward by desire, with open and steady wings to the sweet nest, fly through the air by their volition born. So came they from the band where Dido is, Approaching us athwart the air malign, So strong was the affectionate appeal. O living creature, gracious and benignant, Who visiting goest through the purple air, Us who have stained the world incarnadine, If were the king of the universe our friend, We would pray unto him to give thee peace, 
since thou hast pity on our woe perverse. Of what it pleases thee to hear and speak, that will we hear, and we will speak to you, while silent is the wind, as it is now. Sitteth the city, wherein I was born, upon the seashore, where the Po descends, to rest in peace with all his retinue. Love, that on gentle heart doth swiftly seize, seize to this man, for the person beautiful, that was taken from me, and still the mode offends me. Love, that exempts no one beloved from loving, seized me with pleasure of this man so strongly, that, as thou seest, it doth not yet desert me. Love has conducted us unto one death, Cain awaiteth him who quenched our life. These words were borne along from them to us. As soon as I had heard, though souls tormented, I bowed my face, and so long held it down until the poet said to me, What thinkest? When I made answer I began, Alas, how many pleasant thoughts, how much desire, conducted these unto the dolorous pass. Then unto them I turned me, and I spake, and I began. Thine agonies, Francesca, sad and compassionate to weeping make me. But tell me, at the time of those sweet sighs, by what and in what manner love conceded, that you should know your dubious desires? And she to me, There is no greater sorrow than to be mindful of the happy time in misery, and that thy teacher knows. But, if to recognize the earliest root of love in us thou hast so great desire, I will do even as he who weeps and speaks. One day we reading were for our delight, of Lancelot, how love did him enthrall. Alone we were, and without any fear. Full many a time our eyes together drew, that reading, and to drove the colour from our faces. But one point only was it that o'ercame us, when as we read of the much longed-for smile, being by such a noble lover kissed, this one, who ne'er from me shall be divided, kissed me upon the mouth all palpitating. Galeotto was the book, and he who wrote it. That day no father did we read therein. And all the while one spirit uttered this, the other did weep, so that, for pity, I swooned away, as if I had been dying, and fell, even as a dead body falls. End of Inferno, Canto 1-5 to This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Annie Coleman. www.anniecoleman.com The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Inferno Canto 6 to 10 Inferno, Canto 6 At the return of consciousness that closed before the pity of those two relations which utterly with sadness had confused me, new torments I behold, and new tormented around me, whichsoever way I move, and whichsoever way I turn and gaze. In the third circle am I of the rain, eternal, maledict, and cold and heavy, its law and quality are never new. Huge hail, and water somber-hued, and snow, Athwart the tenebrous air, pour down amain. Noisome the earth is, that receiveth this. Cerebrus, monster cruel and uncouth, With his three gullets like a dog, is barking, Over the people that are there submerged. Red eyes he has, an unctuous beard, and black, and belly large, and armed with claws his hands. He rends the spirits, flays, and quarters them. Howl, 
The rain maketh them like unto dogs. One side they make a shelter for the other. Oft turn themselves the wretched reprobates. When Cerebrus perceived us, the great worm, his mouths he opened and displayed his tusks. Not a limb had he that was motionless. And my conductor, with his spans extended, took of the earth, and with his fists well filled, he threw it into those rapacious gullets, such as that dog is, who, by barking, craves, and quiet grows soon as his food he gnaws, for to devour it he but thinks and struggles. The like became those muzzles, filth begrimed of Cerebrus, the demon, who so thunders over the souls that they would fain be deaf. We passed across the shadows, which subdues the heavy rainstorm, and we placed our feet upon their vanity, that person seems. They all were lying prone upon the earth, excepting one who sat upright as soon as he beheld us passing on before him. O oh, thou that art conducted through this hell, he said to me, recall me if thou canst. Thyself wast made before I was unmade. And I to him, the anguish which thou hast perhaps doth draw thee out of my remembrance, so that it seems not I have ever seen thee. But tell me who thou art that in so doleful a place art put, and in such punishment if some are greater, none is so displeasing. And he to me, thy city, which is full of envy, so that now the sack runs over, held me within it in the life serene. You citizens were wont to call me Chiaco, for the pernicious sin of gluttony. I, as thou seest, am battered by this rain. And I, sad soul, am not the only one, for all these suffer the like penalty for the like sin. And word no more spake he. I answered him, Chiaco, thy wretchedness weighs on me, so that it to weep invites me. But tell me, if thou knowest, to what shall come the citizens of the divided city, if any there be just, and the occasion tell me why so much discord has assailed it? And he, to me, they, after long contention, will come to bloodshed, and the rustic party will drive the other out with much offense." Then, afterwards, behoves it this one fall within three suns, and rise again the other, by force of him who now is on the coast. High will it hold its forehead a long while, keeping the other under heavy burdens, howe'er it weeps thereat, and is indignant. The just are two, and are not understood there. Envy and arrogance and avarice, are the three sparks that have all hearts enkindled. Here ended he his tearful utterance, and I to him, I wish thee still to teach me, and make a gift to me of further speech. Ferenata and Teggio, once so worthy, Jacopo Rusticucci, Arrigo, and Mosca, and others who on good deeds set their thoughts, say where they are and cause that I may know them, for great desire constraineth me to learn, if heaven doth sweeten them, or hell in venom. And he, they are among the blacker souls, a different sin downweighs them to the bottom, if thou so far descendest, thou canst see them. But when thou art again in the sweet world, I pray thee, to the mind of others, bring me, no more I tell thee, and no more I answer." Then his straightforward eyes he turned askance, eyed me a little, and then bowed his head. He fell there with prone like the other, blind. And the guide said to me, He wakes no more. This side, the sound of the angelic trumpet, one shall approach the hostile potentate. Each one shall find again his dismal tomb, shall reassume his flesh and his own figure, shall hear what through eternity re-echoes. So we passed onward, o'er the filthy mixture, Of shadows and of rain with footsteps slow, Touching a little on the future life. Wherefore I said, Master, these torments here, Will they increase after the mighty sentence, Or lesser be, or will they be as burning? And he, to me, 
return unto thy science which wills that as the thing more perfect is the more it feels of pleasure and of pain albeit that this people maledict to true perfection never can attain hereafter more than now they look to be round in a circle by that road we went speaking much more which i do not repeat we came unto the point where the descent is there we found plutus the great enemy inferno canto seven pape satan pape satan alepe thus plutus with his clucking voice began and that benignant sage who all things knew said to encourage me let not thy fear harm thee for any power that he may have shall not prevent thy going down this crag then he turned round unto that bloated lip and said be silent thou accursed wolf consume within thyself with thine own rage not causeless is his journey to the abyss thus it is willed on high where michael wrought vengeance upon the proud adultery even as the sails inflated by the wind involved together fall when snaps the mast so fell the cruel monster to the earth thus we descended into the fourth chasm gaining still farther on the dolesome shore which all the woe of the universe insacks justice of god ah who heaps up so many new toils and sufferings as i beheld and why doth our transgression waste us so as doth the billow there upon charybdis that breaks itself on that which it encounters so here the folk must dance their round delay here saw i people more than elsewhere many on one side and the other with great howls rolling weights forward by main force of chest they clashed together and then at that point each one turned backward rolling retrograde crying why keepest and why squanderest thou thus they returned along the lurid circle on either hand unto the opposite point shouting their shameful meter evermore then each when he arrived there wheeled about threw his half circle to another joust and i who had my heart pierced as it were exclaimed my master now declare to me what people these are and if all were clerks these shaven crowns upon the left of us and he to me all of them were asquint in intellect in the first life so much that there with measure they no spending made clearly enough their voices bark it forth whene'er they reach the two points of the circle where sunders them the opposite defect clerks those were who no hairy covering have on the head and popes and cardinals in whom doth avarice practice its excess and i my master among such as these i ought forsooth to recognize some few who were infected with these maladies and he to me vain thought thou entertainest the undiscerning life which made them sordid now makes them unto all discernment dim forever shall they come to these two buddings these from the sepulchre shall rise again with the fist closed and these with tresses shorn ill-giving and ill-keeping the fair world have taken from them and placed them in this scuffle whate'er it be no words adorn i for it now canst thou son behold the transient farce of goods that are committed unto fortune for which the human race each other buffet for all the gold that is beneath the moons or ever has been of these weary souls could never make a single one repose master i said to him now tell me also what is this fortune which thou speakest of that has the world's goods so within its clutches and he to me o oh, creatures imbecile what ignorance is this which doth beset you now will i have thee learn my judgment of her he whose omniscience everything transcends the heavens created and gave who should guide them that every part to every part may shine distributing the light in equal measure he in like manner to the mundane splendors ordained a general ministress and guide 
that she might change at times the empty treasures from race to race, from one blood to another, beyond resistance of all human wisdom. Therefore one people triumphs, and another languishes, in pursuance of her judgment, which hidden is, as in the grass, a serpent. Your knowledge has no counterstand against her. She makes provision, judges, and pursues her governance, as theirs the other gods. Her permutations have not any truce. Necessity makes her precipitate. So often cometh who his turn obtains. And this is she who is so crucified, even by those who ought to give her praise, giving her blame amiss and bad repute. But she is blissful, and she hears it not, among the other primal creatures gladsome. She turns her sphere, and blissful she rejoices. Let us descend now unto greater woe. Already sinks each star that was ascending when I set out, and loitering is forbidden. We crossed the circle to the other bank, near to a fount that boils, and pours itself along a gully that runs out of it. The water was more somber far than purse, and we, in company with the dusky waves, made entrance downward by a path uncouth. A marsh it makes, which has the name of Styx. This tristful brooklet, when it has descended down to the foot of the malign gray shores. And I, who stood intent upon beholding, saw people mud besprent in that lagoon, all of them naked and with angry look. They smote each other not alone with hands, but with the head and with the breast and feet, tearing each other piecemeal with their teeth. Said the good master, Son, thou now beholdest the souls of those whom anger overcame, and likewise I would have thee know for certain, Beneath the water people are who sigh, and make this water bubble at the surface, as the eye tells thee wheresoe'er it turns. Fixed in the mire, they say, we sullen were in the sweet air which by the sun is gladdened, bearing within ourselves the sluggish reek. Now we are sullen in this sable mire. This hymn do they keep gurgling in their throats, for with unbroken words they cannot say it. Thus we went circling round the filthy fen, a great ark twixt the dry bank and the swamp, with eyes turned unto those who gorged the mire. Unto the foot of a tower we came at last. Inferno, Canto Eight. I say, continuing, that long before we to the foot of that high tower had come, our eyes went upward to the summit of it. By reason of two flamelets we saw placed there, and from afar another answer them, so far that hardly could the eye attain it. And to the sea of all discernment turned, I said, What saith this, and what respondeth that other fire? And who are they that made it? And he to me, Across the turbid waves what is expected thou canst now discern, If reek of the morass conceal it not. Cord never shot an arrow from itself, That sped away athwart the air so swift, As I beheld a very little boat come o'er the water towards us at that moment, Under the guidance of a single pilot, who shouted, Now art thou arrived, fell soul! Phlegius, Phlegius, thou criest out in vain, for this once, said my lord, thou shalt not have us longer than in the passing of the slough. As he who listens to some great deceit, that has been done to him, and then resents it, such became Phlegius in his gathered wrath. My guide descended down into the boat, and then he made me enter after him, and only when I entered seemed it laden. Soon as the guide and I were in the boat, the antique prow goes on its way, dividing more of the water than tis wont with others. While we were running through the dead canal, up rose in front of me one full of mire, and said, Who art thou that comest here the hour? And I to him, Although I come, I stay not. But who art thou that hast become so squalid? Thou seest that I am one who weeps, he answered. 
and I to him, with weeping and with wailing, thou spirit maledict, do thou remain, for thee I know, though thou art all defiled. Then stretched he both his hands unto the boat, whereat my wary master thrust him back, saying, Away there with the other dogs. Thereafter with his arms he clasped my neck, he kissed my face, and said, Disdainful soul, blessed be she who bore thee in her bosom. That was an arrogant person in the world. Goodness is none that decks his memory. So likewise here his shade is furious. How many are esteemed great kings up there, who here shall be like unto swine in mire, leaving behind them horrible dispraises. And I, my master, much should I be pleased if I could see him soused into this broth, before we issue forth out of the lake. And he to me, Ere unto thee the shore reveal itself, thou shalt be satisfied. Such a desire tis meet thou shouldst enjoy. A little after that I saw such havoc made of him by the people of the mire, that still I praise and thank my God for it. They all were shouting, At Filippo, Argenti! and that exasperate spirit Florentine turned round upon himself with his own teeth. We left him there, and more of him I tell not, but on mine ears there smote a lamentation whence forward I intent unbar mine eyes. And the good master said, Even now, my son, the city draweth near, whose name is Dis, with the grave citizens, with the great throng. And I... Its mosques already, master, clearly within there in the valley I discern vermilion, as if issuing from the fire they were. And he to me, the fire eternal that kindles them within makes them look red, as thou beholdest in this nether hell. Then we arrived within the moats profound that circumvallate that disconsolate city. The walls appeared to me to be of iron. Not without making first a circuit wide, we came unto a place where loud the pilot cried out to us, Debark, here is the entrance. More than a thousand at the gates I saw, out of the heavens rained down, who angrily were saying, Who is this that without death goes through the kingdom of the people dead? And my sagacious master made a sign of wishing secretly to speak with them. A little then they quelled their great disdain, and said, Come thou alone, and he be gone who has so boldly entered these dominions. Let him return alone by his mad road. Try if he can, for thou shalt here remain, who hast escorted him through such dark regions. Think, reader, if I was discomforted at utterance of the accursed words, for never to return here I believed." Oh, my dear guide, who more than seven times hast rendered me security, and drawn me from imminent peril that before me stood, do not desert me, said I. Thus undone, and if the going farther be denied us, let us retrace our steps together swiftly. And that Lord, who had led me thitherward, said unto me, Fear not, because our passage none can take from us. It by such is given." But here await me in thy weary spirit comfort and nourish with a better hope, for in this nether world I will not leave thee. So onward goes, and there abandons me, my father sweet, and I remain in doubt, for no and yes within my head contend. I could not hear what he proposed to them, but with them there he did not linger long, ere each within in rivalry ran back. They closed the portals, those our adversaries, on my lord's breast, who had remained without, and turned to me with footsteps far between. His eyes cast down, his forehead shorn had he of all its boldness, and he said with sighs, Who has denied to me the dolesome houses? And unto me, Thou, because I am angry, fear not, for I will conquer in the trial, whatever for defense within be planned. This arrogance of theirs is nothing new, for once they used it at less secret gate, which finds itself without a fastening still. Or it didst thou behold the dead inscription, and now this side of it descends the steep, 
passing across the circles without escort, one by whose means the city shall be opened. Inferno, Canto Nine. That hue which cowardice brought out on me, beholding my conductor backward turn, sooner repressed within him his new color. He stopped attentive like a man who listens, because the eye could not conduct him far through the black air and through the heavy fog. Still it behoveth us to win the fight, began he. Else, such offered us herself, oh, how I long that some one here arrive! Well, I perceived, as soon as the beginning he covered up with what came afterward, that they were words quite different from the first. But none the less his saying gave me fear, because I carried out the broken phrase, perhaps to a worse meaning than he had. Into this bottom of the doleful conch doth any air descend from the first grade, which for its pain has only hope cut off? This question put I, and he answered me. Seldom it comes to pass that one of us maketh the journey upon which I go. True it is, once before I here below was conjured by that pitiless Erichtho, who summoned back the shades unto their bodies. Naked of me short while the flesh had been, before within that wall she made me enter to bring a spirit from the circle of Judas. That is the lowest region, and the darkest, and farthest from the heaven which circles all. Well know I the way, therefore be reassured. This fen, which a prodigious stench exhales, encompasses about the city dolent, where now we cannot enter without anger. And more he said, but not in mind I have it, because mine eye had altogether drawn me towards the high tower with the red flaming summit, where in a moment saw I swift uprisen the three infernal furies, stained with blood, who had the limbs of women in their mien, and with the greenest hydras were begirt, small serpents and serastas were their tresses, wherewith their horrid temples were entwined. And he who well the handmaids of the queen of everlasting lamentation knew, said unto me, Behold the fierce Erinys, this is Megara on the left-hand side, she who is weeping on the right, Alecto, Tisiphone is between, and then was silent. Each one her breast was rending with her nails that beat them with their palms and cried so loud that I for dread pressed close unto the poet. Medusa come, so we to the stone will change him, all shouted looking down. In evil hour avenge we not on Theseus' assault. Turn thyself round, and keep thine eyes close shut, for if the gorgon appear, and thou shouldst see it, no more returning upward would there be. Thus said the master, and he turned me round himself, and trusted not unto my hands so far as not to blind me with his own. O ye who have undistempered intellects, observe the doctrine that conceals itself beneath the veil of the mysterious verse. And now there came... Across the turbid waves the clangor of a sound with terror fraught, because of which both of the margins trembled. Not otherwise it was than of a wind, impetuous on account of adverse heats, that smites the forest, and, without restraint, the branches rends, beats down, and bears away. Right onward, laden with dust, it goes, superb, and puts to flight the wild beasts and the shepherds. Mine eyes he loosed, and said, Direct the nerve of vision now along that ancient foam, there yonder where that smoke is most intense. Even as the frogs before the hostile serpent across the water scatter all abroad, until each one is huddled in the earth. More than a thousand ruined souls I saw, thus fleeing from before one who on foot was passing o'er the sticks with souls unwet. Far off his face he fanned that unctuous air, waving his left hand oft in front of him, and only with that anguish seemed he weary. Well, I perceived one sent from heaven was he, and to the master turned, and he made sign that I should quiet stand and bow before him. Ah, how disdainful he appeared to me! He reached the gate, and with a little nod he opened it, for there was no resistance. O oh, banished out of heaven, people despised! 
Thus he began upon the horrid threshold. Whence is this arrogance within you couched? Wherefore recalcitrate against that will from which the end can never be cut off, and which has many times increased your pain? What helpeth it to bud against your fates? Your Cerberus, if you remember well, for that still bears his chin and gullet peeled. Then he returned along the miry road, and spake no word to us, but had the look of one whom other care constrains and goads, than that of him who in his presence is. And we our feet directed towards a city, after those holy words, all confident. Within we entered without any contest, and I, whose inclination had to see what the condition such a fortress holds, soon as I was within, cast round mine eye, and see on every hand an ample plain, full of distress and torment terrible. Even as at Arles, where stagnant grows the Rhone, even as at Pola, near to the Quarnaro, that shuts in Italy and bathes its borders, the sepulchres made all the place uneven, so likewise did they there on every side, saying that there the manner was more bitter. For flames between the sepulchres were scattered, by which they so intensely heated were, that iron more so asks not any art. All of their coverings uplifted were, and from them issued forth such dire laments, soothe seemed they of the wretched and tormented. And I, my master, what are all those people who, having sepulcher within those tombs, make themselves audible by doleful sighs? And he to me, Here are the heresiarchs, with their disciples of all sects, and much more than thou thinkest, laden are the tombs. Here, like together with its like, is buried, and more and less the monuments are heated." And when he to the right had turned, we passed between the torments and high parapets. Inferno, Canto Ten. Now onward goes along a narrow path between the torments and the city wall, my master, and I follow at his back. O power supreme that through these impious circles turnest me, I began. As pleases thee speak to me, and my longing satisfy. The people who are lying in these tombs, might they be seen? Already are uplifted the covers all, and no one keepeth guard. And he to me, they all will be closed up when, from Jehoshaphat, they shall return here with the bodies they have left above. Their cemetery have upon this side with Epicurus all his followers, who with the body mortal make the soul. But in the question thou dost put to me, within here shalt thou soon be satisfied, and likewise in the wish thou keepest silent. And I, good leader, I but keep concealed from thee my heart, that I may speak the less, nor only now hast thou thereto disposed me. O Tuscan, thou who through the city of fire goest alive, Thou speaking modestly, be pleased to stay thy footsteps in this place. Thy mode of speaking makest thee manifest, a native of that noble fatherland, to which perhaps I too molestful was. Upon a sudden issued forth this sound, from out of one of the tombs wherefore I pressed, fearing a little nearer to my leader. And unto me he said, Turn thee, what dost thou? Behold there, Farinata, who has risen from the waist upwards, holy shalt thou see him. I had already fixed mine eyes on his, and he uprose, erect with breast and front, even as if hell he had in great despite. And with courageous hands and prompt, my leader thrust me between the sepulchres towards him, exclaiming, Let thy words explicit be. As soon as I was at the foot of the tomb, Somewhat he eyed me, and, as if disdainful, then asked of me, Who were thine ancestors? I, who desirous of obeying was, concealed it not, but all revealed to him, whereat he raised his brows a little upward. Then he said, Fiercely adverse have they been to me, and to my fathers in my party, so that too several times I scattered them. 
"'If they were banished, they returned on all sides,' I answered him, "'the first time and the second, but yours have not acquired that art aright.' Then there uprose upon the sight, uncovered, down to the chin, a shadow at his side. I think that he had risen on his knees. Round me he gazed, as if solicitude he had to see if some one else were with me. But after his suspicion was all spent, weeping, he said to me, If through this blind prison thou goest by loftiness of genius, where is my son, and why is he not with thee? and I to him, I come not of myself, he who is waiting yonder leads me here, whom in disdain perhaps your Guido had. His language and the mode of punishment already unto me had read his name, on that account my answer was so full. Up starting suddenly he cried out, How saidst thou, he had, is he not still alive, does not the sweet light strike upon his eyes? When he became aware of some delay, which I before my answer made, supine he fell again, and forth appeared no more. But the other, magnanimous at whose desire I had remained, did not his aspect change, neither his neck he moved nor bent his side. And if, continuing his first discourse, they have that art, he said, not learned aright, that more tormenteth me than doth this bed. But fifty times shall not rekindled be the countenance of the lady who reigns here, ere thou shalt know how heavy is that art. And as thou wouldst to the sweet world return, say why that people is so pitiless against my race in each one of its laws. Whence I to him, the slaughter and great carnage which have with crimson stained the arbia, cause such orisons in our temple to be made." After his head he with a sigh had shaken. There I was not alone, he said, nor surely without a cause had with the others moved. But there I was alone, where every one consented to the laying waste of Florence, he who defended her with open face. Ah, so hereafter may your seed repose, I him entreated. Solve for me that knot which has tangled my conceptions here. It seems that you can see, if I hear rightly, beforehand whatsoever time brings with it, and in the present have another mode. We see, like those who have imperfect sight, the things, he said, that distant are from us. So much still shines on us the sovereign ruler. When they draw near, or are, is wholly vain our intellect. And if none brings it to us, not anything know we of your human state." Hence thou canst understand that holy dead will be our knowledge from the moment when the portal of the future shall be closed. Then I, as if compunctuous for my fault, said, Now then you will tell that fallen one that still his son is with the living joined. And if just now in answering I was dumb, tell him I did it because I was thinking already of the error you have solved me. And now my master was recalling me, wherefore, more eagerly, I prayed the spirit that he would tell me who was with him there. He said, With more than a thousand here I lie. Within here is the second Frederick, and the cardinal, and of the rest I speak not. Thereon he hid himself, and I towards the ancient poet turned my steps, reflecting upon that saying which seemed hostile to me. He moved along, and afterward, thus going, he said to me, Why art thou so bewildered? And I, in his inquiry, satisfied him. Let memory preserve what thou hast heard against thyself, that sage commanded me, and now attend here. And he raised his finger. When thou shalt be before the radiance, sweet, of her whose beauteous eyes all things behold, from her thou wilt know the journey of thy life. Unto the left hand then he turned his feet. We left the wall and went towards the middle, along a path that strikes into a valley, which even up there unpleasant made its stench. End of section two of the Inferno, cantos six through ten. Recorded by Annie Coleman in St. Louis, Missouri, on October 1st, 2006.
This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Canto eleven through Canto fifteen Inferno Canto eleven Upon the margin of a lofty bank, which great rocks broken in a circle made, we came upon a still more cruel throng. And there, by reason of the horrible excess of stench the deep abyss throws out, we drew ourselves aside behind the cover of a great tomb, whereupon I saw a writing, which said, Pope Anastasius, I hold, whom out of the right way Photinus drew. Slow it behoveth our descent to be, so that the sense be first a little used to the sad blast, and then we shall not heed it, the master thus. And unto him I said, Some compensation find, that the time pass not idly, and he, Thou seest, I think of that, my son, upon the inside of these rocks, began he then to say, are three small circles, from grade to grade, like those which thou art leaving. They are all full of spirits maledict, but that hereafter sight alone suffice thee, hear how and wherefore they are in constraint. Of every malice that wins hate in heaven, injury is the end, and all such end either by force or fraud afflicteth others. But because fraud is man's peculiar vice, more it displeases God, and so stand lowest the fraudulent, and greater dole assails them. All the first circle of the violent is, but since force may be used against three persons, in three rounds tis divided and constructed. To God, to ourselves, and to our neighbor can we use force. I say, on them and on their things, as thou shalt hear with reason manifest. A death by violence, and painful wounds, are to our neighbor given, and in his substance ruin and arson and injurious levies. Whence homicides, and he who smites unjustly, marauders and freebooters, the first round tormenteth all in companies diverse. Man may lay violent hands upon himself and his own goods, and therefore in the second round must perforce, without avail, repent whoever of your world deprives himself, who games, and dissipates his property, and weepeth there, where he should jocund be. Violence can be done the deity, in heart denying and blaspheming him, and by disdaining nature and her bounty. And for this reason doth the smallest round seal with its signet Sodom and Cahors, and who, disdaining God, speaks from the heart. Fraud, wherewithal is every conscience stung, a man may practice upon him who trusts, and him who doth no confidence in birth. This latter mode, it would appear, dissevers only the bond of love which nature makes. Wherefore, within the second circle, nestle hypocrisy, flattery, and who deals in magic, falsification, theft and simony, panders and beraters, and the like filth. By the other mode, forgotten is that love which nature makes, and what is after added, from which there is a special faith engendered, hence in the smallest circle, where the point is of the universe, upon which dice is seated, whoever betrays for ever is consumed. And I, my master, clear enough proceeds thy reasoning, 
and full well distinguishes this cavern and the people who possess it. But tell me, those within the fat lagoon whom the wind drives and whom the rain doth beat, and who encounter with such bitter tongues, wherefore are they inside of the red city not punished, if God has given them in his wrath, and if he has not, wherefore in such fashion? And unto me he said, Why wanders so thine intellect from that which it is wont, or sooth thy mind, where is it elsewhere looking? Hast thou no recollection of those words with which thine ethics thoroughly discusses the dispositions three that heaven abides not, incontinence, and malice, and insane bestiality, and how incontinence less God offendeth, and less blame attracts. If thou regardest this conclusion well, and to thy mind recallest who they are that up outside are undergoing penance, clearly wilt thou perceive why from these felons they separated are, and why less wroth justice divine doth smite them with its hammer. O oh, son that healest all distempered vision, thou dost content me so, when thou resolvest, that doubting pleases me no less than knowing. Once more a little backward turn thee, said I, there, where thou sayest that usury offends goodness divine, and disengage the knot. Philosophy, he said, to him who heeds it, noteth not only in one place alone, after which manner nature takes her course from intellect divine, and from its art, and if thy physics carefully thou notest, after not many pages shalt thou find that this your art as far as possible follows, as the disciple doth the master, so that your art is, as it were, God's grandchild. From these two, if thou bringest to thy mind Genesis at the beginning, it behooves mankind to gain their life and to advance. And since the usurer takes another way, nature herself, and in her follower, disdains he, for elsewhere he puts his hope. But follow now, as I would fain go on, for quivering are the fishes on the horizon, and the wane wholly over Carus lies, and far beyond there we descend the crag. Inferno, Canto Twelve. The place where to descend the bank we came was Alpine, and from what was there, moreover, of such a kind that every eye would shun it, such as that ruin is which in the flank smote on this side of Trent the adage, either by earthquake or by failing stay, for from the mountain's top, from which it moved, unto the plain, the cliff is shattered so, some path t'would give to him who was above. Even such was the descent of that ravine, and on the border of the broken chasm the infamy of Crete was stretched along, who was conceived in the fictitious cow and when he us beheld, he bit himself, even as one whom anger racks within. My sage towards him shouted, Peradventure thou thinks that here may be the Duke of Athens, who in the world above brought death to thee? Get thee gone, beast, for this one cometh not instructed by thy sister, but he comes in order to behold your punishments. As is that bull who breaks loose at the moment in which he has received the mortal blow, who cannot walk but staggers here and there, the minotaur beheld I do the like. And he, the wary, cried, Run to the passage while he wroth, tis well thou shouldst descend. Thus down we took our way o'er that discharge of stones, which oftentimes did move themselves beneath my feet, from the unwanted burden. Thoughtful 
I went. And he said, Thou art thinking, perhaps, upon this ruin, which is guarded by that brute anger which just now I quenched. Now will I have thee know, the other time I here descended to the nether hell, this precipice had not yet fallen down. But truly, if I well discern, a little before his coming, who the mighty spoil bore off from Dees in the supernal circle, upon all sides the deep and loathsome valley trembled so, that I thought the universe was thrilled with love, by which there are who think the world oft-times converted into chaos, and at that moment this primeval crag both here and elsewhere, made such overthrow. But fix thine eyes below, for draweth near the river of blood, within which boiling is whoever by violence doth injure others. O oh, blind cupidity, O oh, wrath insane, that spurs us onward so in our short life, and in the eternal, then, so badly steeps us. I saw an ample moat, bent like a bow, as one which all the plain encompasses, conformable to what my guide had said. And between this and the embankment's foot, centaurs in file were running, armed with arrows, as in the world they used the chase to follow. Beholding us descend, each one stood still, and from the squadron three detached themselves, with bows and arrows in advance selected, and from afar one cried, Unto what torment come ye, who down the hillside are descending? Tell us from here, if not, I draw the bow. My master said, Our answer will we make to Chiron. Near you there, in evil hour, that will of thine was evermore so hasty. Then touched he me, and said, This one is Nessus, who perished for the lovely Dejanira, and for himself, himself did vengeance take. And in the midst, who at his breast is gazing, is the great Chiron, who brought up Achilles. That other Pholus is, who was so wrathful. Thousands and thousands go about the moat, shooting with shafts whatever soul emerges out of the blood, more than his crime allots. Near we approached unto those monsters' fleet. Churin an arrow took, and with the notch backward upon his jaws he put his beard. After he had uncovered his great mouth, he said to his companions, are you aware that he behind moveth whatever he touches? Thus are not wont to do the feet of dead men. And my good guide, who now was at his breast, where the two natures are together joined, replied, Indeed, he lives, and thus alone me it behooves to show him the dark valley. Necessity and not delight impels us. Some one withdrew from singing Hallelujah, who unto me committed this new office. No thief is he, nor I, a thievish spirit. But by that virtue through which I am moving, my steps along this savage thoroughfare, give us some one of thine to be with us, and who may show us where to pass the ford, and who may carry this one on his back for tis no spirit that can walk the air. Upon his right breast Chiron wheeled about, and said to Nessus, Turn, and do thou guide them, and warn aside if other band may meet you. We with our faithful escort onward moved along the brink of the vermilion boiling, wherein the boiled were uttering loud laments. People I saw within up to the eyebrows, and the great centaur said, Tyrants are these, who dealt in bloodshed and in pillaging, 
Here they lament their pitiless mischiefs. Here is Alexander, and fierce Dionysus, who upon Sicily brought dolorous years. That forehead there, which has the hair so black, is Azulin, and the other who is blonde, Obizo is of Esti, who, in truth, up in the world was by his stepson slain. Then turned I to the poet, and he said, Now he be first to thee, and second I. A little farther on the centaur stopped above a folk, who, far down as the throat seemed from that boiling stream to issue forth, a shade he showed us on one side alone, saying, He cleft asunder in God's bosom the heart that still upon the Thames is honoured. Then people saw I, who from out of the river lifted their heads and and also all the chest, and many among these I recognized. Thus evermore and more grew shallower that blood, so that the feet alone it covered, and there across the moat our passage was. Even as thou here upon this side beholdest the boiling stream, that I diminishes, the centaur said, I wish thee to believe that on this other side more and more declines its bed, until it reunites itself, where it behoveth tyranny to groan. Justice divine upon this side is goading that Attila, who was a scourge on earth, and Pyrrhus and Sextus, and for ever milks the tears, which with the boiling it unseals, in Rinier da Corneto, and Rinier Pazzo, who made upon the highways so much war. Then back he turned, and passed again the ford. Inferno, Canto thirteen. Not yet had Nessus reached the other side, when we had put ourselves within a wood, that was not marked by any path whatever. Not foliage green, but of a dusky color, not branches smooth, but gnarled and intertangled, not apple trees were there, but thorns with poison. Such tangled thickets have not, nor so dense, those savage wild beasts that in hatred hold twixt Senina and Cornetto, the tilled places. There do the hideous harpies make their nests, who chase the Trojans from the Strophides, with sad announcement of impending doom. Broad wings have they, and necks and faces human, and feet with claws, and their great bellies fledged. They make laments upon the wondrous trees. And the good master? Ere thou enter farther, know that thou art within the second round, thus he began to say, and shalt be till thou comest out upon the horrible sand. Therefore look well around, and thou shalt see things that will credence give unto my speech. I heard on all sides lamentations uttered, and person none beheld I who might make them, whence, utterly bewildered, I stood still. I think he thought that I perhaps might think so many voices issued through those trunks from people who concealed themselves from us. Therefore the master said, If thou break off some little spray from any of those trees, the thoughts thou hast will wholly be made vain. Then stretched I forth my hand a little forward, and plucked a branchlet off from a great thorn. And the trunk cried, Why dost thou mangle me? After it had become embrowned with blood, it recommenced its cry, Why dost thou rend me? Hast thou no spirit of pity whatsoever? Men once we were, 
and now are changed to trees. Indeed, thy hand should be more pitiful, even if the souls of serpents we had been, as out of a green brand that is on fire at one of the ends, and from the other drips and hisses with the wind that is escaping, so from that splinter issued forth together both words and blood, whereat I let the tip fall, and stood like a man who is afraid. Had he been able sooner to believe, my sage made answer, O thou wounded soul, what only in my verses he has seen, not upon thee had he stretched forth his hand, whereas the thing incredible has caused me to put him to an act which grieveth me. But tell him who thou wast, so that by way of some amends thy fame he may refresh up in the world, to which he can return. And the trunk said, so thy sweet words allure me, I cannot silent be, and you be vexed not, that I a little to the discourse am tempted. I am the one who both keys had in keeping of Frederick's heart, and turned them to and fro, so softly in unlocking and in locking, that from his secrets most men I withheld, Fidelity I bore, the glorious office so great, I lost thereby my sleep and pulses. The courtesan who never from the dwelling of Caesar turned aside her strumpet eyes, death universal, and the vice of courts, inflamed against me all the other minds, and they, inflamed, did so inflame Augustus, that my glad honours turned to dismal mournings. My spirit, in disdainful exultation, thinking by dying to escape disdain, made me unjust against myself the just. I, by the roots unwanted of this wood, do swear to you that never broke I faith unto my lord, who was so worthy of honour, and to the world, if one of you return, let him my memory comfort, which is lying still prostrate from the blow that envy dealt it. Waited a while, and then, Since he is silent, the poet said to me, Lose not the time, but speak and question him, if more may please thee. Whence I to him, Do thou again inquire concerning what thou thinkst will satisfy me? For I cannot, such pity is in my heart. Therefore he recommenced. So may the man do for thee freely what thy speech implores. Spirit incarnate, again be pleased, to tell us in what way the soul is bound within these knots, and tell us, if thou canst, if any from such members ever is freed. Then blew the trunk amain, and afterward the wind was into such a voice converted. With brevity shall be replied to you, when the exasperated soul abandons the body whence it rent itself away, Minos consigns it to the seventh abyss. It falls into the forest, and no part is chosen for it, but where fortune hurls it, there, like a grain of spelt, it germinates. It springs a sapling, and a forest tree. The harpies, feeding then upon its leaves, do pain create, and for the pain an outlet. Like others, for our spoils shall we return, but not that any one may them revest, for tis not just to have what one casts off. Here we shall drag them, and along the dismal forest our bodies shall suspended be, 
each to the thorn of his molested shade. We were attentive still unto the trunk, thinking that more it yet might wish to tell us, when, by a tumult, we were overtaken, in the same way as he is who perceives the boar and chase approaching to his stand, who hears the crashing of the beasts and branches, and, too, behold, upon our left-hand side, naked and scratched, fleeing so furiously, that, of the forest, every fan they broke. He who was in advance, Now, help! Death! Help! And the other one, who seemed to lag too much, was shouting, Lano, were not so alert those legs of thine at joustings of the topo. And then, perchance because his breath was failing, he grouped himself together with a bush. Behind them was the forest full of black she-mastiffs, ravenous, and swift of foot as greyhounds, who are issuing from the chain. On him who had crouched down they set their teeth, and him they lacerated piece by piece, thereafter bore away those aching members. Thereat my escort took me by the hand, and led me to the bush, that all in vain was weeping from its bloody lacerations. O oh, Jacopo, it said, a Saint Andrea, what helped it thee of me to make a screen? What blame have I in thy nefarious life? When near him had the master stayed his steps, he said, Who wast thou, that through wounds so many art blowing out with blood thy dolorous speech? And he to us, O oh, souls that hither come to look upon the shameful massacre that has so rent away from me my leaves, gather them up beneath the dismal bush, I of that city was which to the Baptist changed its first patron. Wherefore, he for this for ever with his art will make me sad. And were it not that on the pass of Arno some glimpses of him are remaining still, those citizens who afterwards rebuilt it upon the ashes left by Attila, in vain had caused their labor to be done. Of my own house I made myself a gibbet. Inferno, Canto fourteen. Because the charity of my native place constrained me, gathered I the scattered leaves, and gave them back to him, who now was hoarse. Then came we to the confine, where disparted the second round is from the third, and where a horrible form of justice is beheld. Clearly, to manifest these novel things, I say that we arrived upon a plain, which from its bed rejecteth every plant. The dolorous forest is a garland to it, all round about, as the sad moat to that. There close upon the edge we stayed our feet. The soil was of an arid and thick sand, not of another fashion, made than that which by the feet of Cato once was pressed. Vengeance of God, O oh, how much oughtest thou by each one to be dreaded, who doth read that which was manifest unto mine eyes. Of naked souls beheld I many herds, who all were weeping very miserably, and over them seemed set a law diverse. Supine upon the ground some folk were lying, and some were sitting all drawn up together, and others went about continually. Those who were going round were far the more, and those were less who lay down to their torment, but had their tongues more loosed to lamentation. 
or all the sand waste with a gradual fall were raining down dilated flakes of fire as of the snow on alp without a wind as alexander in those torrid parts of india beheld upon his host flames fall unbroken till they reached the ground whence he provided with his phalanxes to trample down the soil because the vapour better extinguished was while it was single thus was descending the eternal heat whereby the sand was set on fire like tender beneath the steel for doubling of the dole without repose for ever was the dance of miserable hands now there now here shaking away from off them the fresh gleeds master began i thou who overcomest all things except the demons dire that issued against us at the entrance of the gate who is that mighty one who seems to heed not the fire and lieth lowering and disdainful so that the rain seems not to ripen him and he himself who had become aware that i was questioning my guide about him cried such as i was living am i dead if jove should weary out his smith from whom he seized in anger the sharp thunderbolt wherewith upon the last day i was smitten and if he wearied out by turns the others in mongibello at the swarthy forge vociferating help good vulcan help even as he did there at the fight of flagra and shot his bolts at me with all his might he would not have thereby a joyous vengeance then did my leader speak with such great force that i had never heard him speak so loud o capaneus in that is not extinguished thine arrogance thou punished art the more not any torment saving thine own rage would be unto thy fury pain complete then he turned round to me with bitter lip saying one of the seven kings was he who thebes besieged and held and seems to hold god in disdain and little seems to prize him but as i said to him his own despites are for his breast the fittest ornaments now follow me and mind thou do not place as yet thy feet upon the burning sand but always keep them close unto the wood speaking no word we came to where there gushes forth from the wood a little rivulet whose redness makes my hair still stand on end as from the bullocame springs the brooklet the sinful women later share among them so downward through the sand it went its way the bottom of it and both sloping banks were made of stone and the margins at the side whence i perceived that there the passage was in all the rest which i have shown to thee since we have entered in within the gate whose threshold unto no one is denied nothing has been discovered by thine eyes so notable as is the present river which all the little flames above it quenches these words were of my leader whence i prayed him that he would give me largesse of the food for which he had given me largesse of desire in the midst there sits a wasted land said he thereafterward whose name is crete under whose king the world of old was chaste there is a mountain there that once was glad with waters and with leaves which was called ida now tis deserted as a thing worn out rhea once chose it for the faithful cradle of her own son and to conceal him better 
Whenever he cried, she there had clamors made. A grand old man stands in the mount erect, who holds his shoulders turned towards Damietta, and looks at Rome as if it were his mirror. His head is fashioned of refined gold, and of pure silver are the arms and breast. Then he is brass as far down as the fork. From that point downward all is chosen iron, save that the right foot is of kiln-baked clay, and more he stands on that than on the other. Each part, except the gold, is by a fissure, a sunder cleft, that dripping is with tears, which gather together perforate that cavern. From rock to rock they fall into this valley, Acheron, Styx, and Phlegethon they form. Then downward go along this narrow sluice unto that point where is no more descending. They form Cocytus. What that pool may be thou shalt behold. So here it is not narrated. And I to him, If so the present runnel doth take its rise in this way from our world, why only on this verge appears it to us? And he to me, Thou knowest the place is round, and notwithstanding thou hast journeyed far. Still, to the left descending to the bottom, thou hast not yet through all the circle turned. Therefore, if something new appear to us, it should not bring amazement to thy face. And I again, Master, where shall be found Lethe and Phlegethon? For of one thou art silent, and sayest the other of this reign is made. In all questions truly thou dost please me, replied he, but the boiling of the red water might well solve one of them thou makest. Thou shalt see Lethe, but outside this moat, there where the souls repair to lave themselves, when sin, repented of, has been removed. Then said he, It is time now to abandon the wood. Take heed that thou come after me. Away the margins make that are not burning, and over them all vapours are extinguished. Inferno, Canto 15 Now bears us onward one of the hard margins, and so the brooklet's mists overshadows it. From fire it saves the water and the dikes. Even as the Flemings, twixt Cadzen and Bruges, fearing the flood that towards them hurls itself, their bulwarks build to put the sea to flight, and as the Paduans along the Brenta, to guard their villas and their villages, or ever Chiarentana feel the heat, in such similitude had those been made, albeit not so lofty, nor so thick. Whoever he might be, the master made them. Now were we from the forest so remote, I could not have discovered where it was, even if backward I had turned myself when we a company of souls encountered, who came beside the dyke, and every one gazed at us, as at evening we are wont to eye each other under a new moon, and so towards us sharpened they their brows, as an old tailor at the needle's eye. Thus scrutinized by such a family, by some one I was recognized, who seized my garment's hem, and cried out, What a marvel! And I, when he stretched forth his arm to me, on his baked aspect fastened so mine eyes, that the scorched countenance prevented not his recognition by my intellect. And bowing down my face unto his own, I made reply, 
Are you here, Ser Brunetto? And he, May it not displease thee, O my son, In a brief space, With the Brunetto Latini, Backward return, And let the trail go on. I said to him, With all my power I ask it, And if you wish me to sit down with you, I will, if he please, For I go with him. O oh, son, he said, whoever of this herd a moment stops, lies then a hundred years, nor fans himself when smiteth him the fire. Therefore, go on, I at thy skirts will come, and afterward will I rejoin my band, which goes lamenting its eternal doom. I did not dare go down from the road level to walk with him, but my head bowed, I held as one who goeth reverently. And he began, What fortune, or what fate, before the last day, leadeth thee down here? And who is this that showeth thee the way? Up there, above us, in the life serene, I answered him, I lost me in a valley, or ever yet my age had been completed. But yestermorn I turned my back upon it. This one appeared to me, returning thither, and homeward leadeth me along this road. And he to me, If thou thy star do follow, thou canst not fail thee of a glorious port, if well I judged in the life beautiful. And if I had not died so prematurely, seeing heaven thus benignant unto thee, I would have given thee comfort in the work. But that ungrateful and malignant people, which of old time from Fasole descended, and smacks still of the mountain and the granite, will make itself for thy good deeds thy foe, and it is right, for among crabbed sorbs it ill befits the sweet fig to bear fruit. Old rumour in the world proclaims them blind, a people avaricious, envious, and proud. Take heed that of their customs thou do cleanse thee. Thy fortune so much honour doth reserve thee, one party, and the other shall be hungry for thee, but far from goat shall be the grass. Their litter let the beasts of Fasoli make of themselves, nor let them touch the plant, if any still upon their dunghill rise, in which may yet revive the consecrated seed of those Romans, who remain there when the nest of such great malice it became. If my entreaty wholly were fulfilled, replied I to him, not yet would you be in banishment from human nature placed. For in my mind is fixed, and touches now my heart the dear and good paternal image of you, when, in the world from hour to hour, you taught me how a man becomes eternal, and how much I am grateful, while I live, behooves that in my language be discerned. What you narrate of my career, I write, and keep it to be glossed with other text, by a lady who can do it, if I reach her. This much will I have manifest to you, provided that my conscience do not chide me, for whatsoever fortune I am ready. Such hand-sell is not new unto mine ears, therefore let fortune turn her wheel around, as it may please her, and the churl his mattock. My master thereupon, on his right cheek, did backward turn himself, and looked at me, then said, He listeneth well, who noteth it. Nor speaking less on that account, I go with Ser Brunetto, 
and I ask who are his most known and most eminent companions, and he to me, to know of some is well, of others it were laudable to be silent, for short would be the time for so much speech. Know them in some, that all of them were clerks, and men of letters, great and of great fame, and the world tainted with the self-same sin. Priscian goes yonder with that wretched crowd, and Francis of Accorso. And thou hadst seen there, had thou hadst a hankering for such scurf, that one, who, by the servant of the servants, was transferred from Arno to Bacciglione, where he has left his sin-excited nerves. More would I say, but coming and discoursing can be no longer, for that I behold new smoke uprising yonder from the sand. A people comes with whom I may not be. Commended unto thee be my tesoro, in which I still live, and no more I ask. Then he turned round, and seemed to be like those who at Verona run for the green mantle across the plain, and seemed to be among them the one who wins, and not the one who loses. End of Canto 11 through Canto 15 of the Divine Comedy Read by Dennis Sayers in Modesto, California, for LibriVox. Fall, 2006This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Inferno, Canto 16 to 20. Inferno, Canto 16. Now was I where was heard the reverberation of water falling into the next round, like to that humming which the beehives make. When shadows three together started forth, running from out a company that passed, beneath the rain of the sharp martyrdom. Towards us came they, and each one cried out, Stop thou, for by thy garb to us thou seemest to be some one of our depraved city. Ah, me, what wounds I saw upon their limbs, recent and ancient by the flames burnt in, it pains me still but to remember it. Unto their cries my teacher paused attentive. He turned his face towards me, and, Now wait, he said, to these we should be courteous. And if it were not for the fire that darts the nature of this region, I should say that haste were more becoming to thee than them. As soon as we stood still they recommenced the old refrain, and when they overtook us, formed of themselves a wheel, all three of them. As champions stripped and oiled are wont to do, watching for their advantage and their hold, before they come to blows and thrusts between them. Thus wheeling round did every one his visage direct to me, so that in opposite wise his neck and feet continual journey made. And, if the misery of this soft place bring in disdain ourselves and our entreaties, began one, and our aspect black and blistered, let the renown of us thy mind incline, to tell us who thou art, who thus securely thy living feet dost move along through hell. He in whose footprints thou dost see me treading, naked and skinless though he now may go, was of a greater rank than thou dost think. He was the grandson of the good Gualdrada, his name was Guido Guerra, and in life much did he with his wisdom and his sword, the other, who close by me treads the sand, Tegayo Aldobrandi is, whose fame above there in the world should welcome be. And I, who with them on the cross am placed, Jacopo Rusticucci was, and truly, my savage wife, more than aught else, doth harm me. Could I have been protected from the fire? Below I should have thrown myself among them, and think that the teacher would have suffered it? But as I should have burned and baked myself, my terror overmastered my good will, which made me greedy of embracing them. 
and I began sorrow and not disdain did your condition fix within me so that tardily it wholly is stripped off. As soon as this my lord said unto me, words on account of which I thought within me, that people such as you are were approaching. I of your city am, and evermore your labours and your honourable names I with affection have retraced and heard. I leave the gall and go for the sweet fruits promised to me by the voracious leader, but to the centre first I needs must plunge. So may the soul for a long while conduct those limbs of thine, did he make answer then, and so may thy renown shine after thee. Valour and courtesy, say, if they dwell within our city as they used to do, or if they wholly have gone out of it. For Guillermo Borsier, who is in torment with us of late, and goes there with his comrades, doth greatly mortify us with his words. The new inhabitants and the sudden gains, pride and extravagance have in thee engendered, Florence, so that thou weepst thereat already. In this wise I exclaimed with face uplifted, and the three, taking that for my reply, looked at each other, as one looks at truth. If other times so little it doth cost thee, replied they all, to satisfy another, happy art thou, thus speaking at thy will. Therefore if thou escape from these dark places, and come to re-behold the beauteous stars, when it shall pleasure thee to say, I was, see that thou speak of us unto the people. Then they broke up the wheel, and in their flight it seemed as if their agile legs were wings. Not an amen could possibly be said, so rapidly as they had disappeared, wherefore the master deemed best to depart. I followed him, and little had we gone before the sound of water was so near us that speaking we should hardly have been heard. Even as that stream which holdeth its own course, the first from Monte Vesso towards the east, upon the left-hand slope of the Apennine, which is above called Aquaceta, ere it down descendeth into its low bed, and at Forli is vacant of that name, reverberates there above San Benedetto, from Alps by falling at a single leap, where for a thousand there were room enough. Thus downward from a bank precipitate we found resounding that dark-tinted water, so that it soon the ear would have offended. I had a cord around me girt, and therewithal I Willum had designed to take the panther with the painted skin. After I this had all from me unloosed, as my conductor had commanded me, I reached it to him, gathered up, and coiled. Whereat he turned himself to the right side, and at a little distance from the verge he cast it down into that deep abyss. It must needs be some novelty respond, I said within myself, to the new signal. The master with his eye is following so. Ah, me! How very cautious men should be with those who not alone behold the act, but with their wisdom look into the thoughts. He said to me, Soon there will upward come what I await, and what thy thought is dreaming must soon reveal itself unto thy sight. A to that truth which has the face of falsehood, a man should close his lips as far as may be, because without his fault it causes shame. But here I cannot, and reader, by the notes of this my comedy to thee I swear, so may they not be void of lasting favour. Athwart that dense and darksome atmosphere, I saw a figure swimming upward come, marvellous unto every steadfast heart. Even as he returns who goeth down, sometimes to clear an anchor, which has grappled reef, or aught else that in the sea is hidden, who upward stretches and draws in his feet. End of Canto 16 Inferno, Canto 17 Behold the monster with the pointed tail, who cleaves the hills and breaketh walls and weapons. Behold him who infecteth all the world. Thus unto me my guide began to say, and beckoned him that he should come to shore, near to the confine of the trodden marble. And that uncleanly image of deceit came up and thrust ashore its head and bust, but on the border did not drag its tail. The face was as the face of a just man, its semblance outwardly was so benign, and of a serpent all the trunk beside. Two paws it had, hairy unto the armpits, the back and breast and both the sides it had, depicted o'er with nooses and with shields. With colours more, groundwork or broidery, never in cloth did Tartars make, nor Turks, nor were such tissues by Arachne laid. As sometimes wearies lie upon the shore, that part are in the water, part on land, and as among the guzzling Germans there, the beaver plants himself to wage his war, so that vile monster lay upon the border, which is of stone, and shutteth in the sand. His tail was wholly quivering in the void, contorting upwards the envenomed fork, that in the guise of scorpion armed its point. The guide said, Now perforce must turn aside our way a little, 
even to that beast malevolent that yonder coucheth him. We therefore on the right side descended, and made ten steps upon the outer verge, completely to avoid the sand and flame. And after we are come to him, I see a little farther off upon the sand, a people, sitting near the hollow place. Then said to me the master, So that full experience of this round thou bear away, now go and see what their condition is. There let thy conversation be concise, till thou returnest I will speak with him, that he concede to us his stalwart shoulders. Thus farther still upon the outermost head of that seventh circle all alone I went, where sat the melancholy folk. Out of their eyes was gushing forth their woe, this way, that way, they helped them with their hands, now from the flames and now from the hot soil. Not otherwise in summer do the dogs, now with the foot, now with the muzzle, when by fleas or flies or gadflies they are bitten. When I had turned mine eyes upon the faces of some, on whom the dolorous fire is falling, not one of them I knew, but I perceived that from the neck of each there hung a pouch, which certain color had, and certain blazon, and thereupon it seems their eyes are feeding. And as I gazing round me come among them, upon a yellow pouch I azure saw, that had the face and posture of a lion. Proceeding then the current of my sight, another of them saw I red as blood, display a goose more white than butter is. And one, who with an azure sow and gravid emblazoned had his little pouch of white, said unto me, What dost thou in this moat? Now get thee gone, and since thou art still alive, know that a neighbour of mine, Vitaliano, will have a seat here on my left-hand side. A Paduan am I with these Florentines, Full many a time they thunder in mine ears, exclaiming, Come the sovereign cavalier! He who shall bring the satchel with three goats. Then twisted he his mouth, and forth he thrust his tongue, like to an ox that licks its nose. And fearing lest my longer stay might vex him who had warned me not to tarry long, backward I turned me from those weary souls. I found my guide, who had already mounted upon the back of that wild animal, and said to me, Now be both strong and bold. Now we descend by stairways such as these. Mount thou in front, for I will be midway, so that the tail may have no power to harm thee. Such as he is who has so near the egg of Quartin that his nails are blue already, and trembles all but looking at the shade, even such became I at those proffered words. But shame in me his menaces produced, which maketh servant strong before good master. I seated me upon those monstrous shoulders. I wished to say, and yet the voice came not as I believed, Take heed that thou embrace me. But he, who other times had rescued me in other peril, soon as I had mounted, within his arms encircled and sustained me, and said, Now, Geryon, bestir thyself. The circle's large, and the descent be little. Think of the novel burden which thou hast. Even as the little vessel shoves from shore, backward, still backward, so he thence withdrew. And when he wholly felt himself afloat, there where his breast had been he turned his tail, and that extended like an eel he moved, and with his paws drew to himself the air. A greater fear I do not think there was, what time abandoned fate on the reins, whereby the heavens, as still appears, were scorched. Nor when the wretched Icarus his flanks felt stripped of feathers by the melting wax, his father crying, An ill way thou takest! Then was my own, when I perceived myself on all sides in the air, and saw extinguished the sight of everything but of the monster. Onward he goeth, swimming slowly, slowly, wheels and descends, but I perceive it only by wind upon my face and from below. I heard already on the right the whirlpool, making a horrible crashing under us, whence I thrust out my head with eyes cast downward. Then was I still more fearful of the abyss, because I fires beheld and heard laments, whereat I trembling all the closer cling. I saw then, for before I had not seen it, the turning and descending by great horrors that were approaching upon diverse sides. As falcon who has long been on the wing, who without seeing either lure nor bird, maketh the falconer say, Ah me, thou stoopest! Descendeth weary, once he started swiftly, through a hundred circles, and alights far from his master, sullen and disdainful. Even thus did Garion place us on the bottom, close to the bases of the rough-hewn rock, and being disencumbered of our persons, he sped away as arrow from the string. End of Canto 17 Inferno Canto 18 there is a place in hell called Malabolge, holy of stone and of an iron colour, as is the circle that around it turns. Right in the middle of the field malign there yawns a well exceeding wide and deep, of which its place the structure will recount. 
Round, then, is that enclosure which remains between the well and the foot of the high, hard bank, and has distinct in valleys ten its bottom. As where for the protection of the walls, many and many moats surround the castles, the part in which they are a figure forms. Just such an image those presented there, and as about such strongholds from their gates, unto the outer bank are little bridges. So from the precipice's base did crags project, which intersected dikes and moats, unto the well that truncates and collects them. Within this place, down shaken from the back of Geryon, we found us, and the poet held to the left, and I moved on behind. Upon my right hand I beheld new anguish, new torments, and new wilders of the lash, wherewith the foremost bulge was replete. Down at the bottom were the sinners naked, this side the middle came they facing us, beyond it with us, but with greater steps. Even as the Romans, for the mighty host, the year of jubilee upon the bridge, have chosen a mode to pass the people over, for all upon one side towards the castle, their faces have and go unto St. Peter's, on the other side they go towards the mountain. This side and that, along the livid stone, beheld I horned demons with great scourges, who cruelly were beating them behind. Ah, me, how they did make them lift their legs at the first blows, and sooth not any one, the second waited for, nor for the third. While I was going on, mine eyes by one encountered were, and straight I said, Already with sight of this one I am not unfed. Therefore I stayed my feet to make him out, and with me the sweet guide came to a stand, and to my going somewhat back assented. And he, the scourged one, thought to hide himself, lowering his face, but little it availed him. For said I, Thou that castest down thine eyes, if false are not the features which thou bearest, thou art venedico cachanimico, but what doth bring thee to such pungent sauces? And he to me, unwillingly I tell it, but forces me thine utterance distinct, which makes me recollect the ancient world. I was the one who the fair Gisola induced to grant the wishes of the Marquis, however the shameless story may be told. Not the sole Bolognese am I who weeps here. Nay, rather is this place so full of them, that not so many tongues to-day are taught, twixt Reno and Savannah to say Sipa. And if thereof thou wishest pledge or proof, bring to thy mind our avaricious heart. While speaking in this manner, with his scourge a demon smote him, and said, Get thee gone, Pander, for there are no women here for coin. I joined myself again unto mine escort. Thereafterward, with footsteps few, we came to where a crag projected from the bank. This very easily did we ascend, and turning to the right along its ridge from those eternal circles we departed. When we were there, where it was hollowed out, beneath to give passage to the scourged, the guide said, Wait and see that on thee strike the vision of those others evil born, of whom thou hast not yet beheld the faces, because together with us they have gone. From the old bridge we looked upon the train which towards us came upon the other border, and which the scourges in like manner smite. And the good master, without my inquiring, said to me, See that tall one who is coming, and for his pain seems not to shed a tear? Still, what a royal aspect he retains! That Jason is! who by his heart and cunning the Colchians of the ram made destitute. He by the Isle of Lemnos passed along after the daring women pitiless had unto death devoted all their males. There with his tokens and with ornate words did he deceive Hypsipyle, the maiden who first, herself, had all the rest deceived. There did he leave her pregnant and forlorn. Such sin unto such punishment condemns him, and also for Medea is vengeance done. With him go those who in such wise deceive, and this sufficient be of the first valley, to know, and those that in its jaws its hold. We were already where the narrow path crosses athwart the second dyke, and forms that of a buttress for another arch. Thence we heard people, who are making moan in the next bolgia, snorting with their muzzles, and with their palms beating upon themselves. The margins were encrusted with a mould, by exhalation from below that sticks there, and with the eyes and nostrils wages war. The bottom is so deep, no place suffices to give us sight of it, without ascending the arches back where most the crag impends. Thither we came, and thence down in the moat, I saw a people smothered in a filth that out of human privies seemed to flow. And whilst below there with mine eye I search, I saw one with his head so foul with ordure, it was not clear if he were clerk or layman. He screamed to me, Wherefore art thou so eager to look at me more than the other foul ones? And I to him, because, if I remember, 
I have already seen thee with dry hair. And thou art Alessio Interminie, of Luca, therefore I eye thee more than all the others. And he, thereon, belaboring his pumpkin, The flatteries have submerged me here below, wherewith my tongue was never surfeited. Then said to me the guide, See that thou thrust thy visage somewhere farther in advance, that with thine eyes thou well the face attained, of that uncleanly and dishevelled drab, who there doth scratch herself with filthy nails, and crouches now, and now on foot is standing. That's the harlot, is it, who replied unto her paramour, when he said, Have I great gratitude from thee? Nay, marvellous! And herewith let our sight be satisfied. End of Canto 18 Inferno, Canto 19 O Simon Magus, O forlorn disciples, ye who the things of God which ought to be the brides of holiness rapaciously, for silver and for gold do prostitute, now it behooves for you the trumpet sound, because in this third volge ye abide. We had already on the following tomb ascended to that portion of the crag which o'er the middle of the moat hangs plumb. Wisdom supreme, O oh, how great art thou showest in heaven, in earth, and in the evil world, and with what justice doth thy power distribute. I saw upon the sides and on the bottom the livid stone with perforations filled, all of one size, and every one was round. To me less ample seemed they not, nor greater than those that in my beautiful St. John are fashioned for the place of the baptizers. And one of which, not many years ago, I broke for some one who was drowning in it. Be this a seal all men to undeceive. Out of the mouth of each one there protruded the feet of a transgressor, and the legs up to the calf, the rest within remained. In all of them the souls were both on fire, wherefore the joints so violently quivered, they would have snapped asunder withs and bands. Even as the flame of unctuous things is wont to move upon the outer surface only, so likewise was it there from heel to point. Master, who is that one who writhes himself? More than his other comrades quivering, I said, and whom a redder flame is sucking. And he to me, if thou wilt have me bear thee down there along that bank which lowest lies, from him thou'lt know his errors and himself. And I, what pleases thee to me is pleasing. Thou art my lord, and knowest that I depart not from thy desire, and knowest what is not spoken. Straightway upon the fourth dyke we arrived. We turned, and on the left-hand side descended down into the bottom, full of holes and narrow. And the good master yet from off his haunch, deposed me not till to the hole he brought me of him who so lamented with his shanks whoe'er thou art that standest upside down o doleful soul implanted like a stake to say began i if thou canst speak out i stood even as the friar who is confessing the false assassin who when he is fixed recalls him so that death may be delayed and he cried out dost thou stand there already dost thou stand there already boniface by many years the record lied to me Art thou so early satiate with that wealth, for which thou didst not fear to take by fraud the beautiful lady and then work her woe? Such I became, as people are who stand, not comprehending what is answered them, as if bemocked, and know not how to answer. Then said Virgilius, Say to him straight away, I am not he, I am not he thou thinkest. And I replied as was imposed on me. Whereat the spirit writhed with both his feet, then sighing with a voice of lamentation, said to me, Then what wantest thou of me? If who I am thy carest so much to know, that thou on that account hast crossed the bank, know that I vested was with the great mantle, and truly was I son of the she-bear, so eager to advance the cubs, that wealth above and here myself I pocketed. Beneath my head the others are dragged down, who have preceded me in simony, flattened along the fissure of the rock. Below there I shall likewise fall. Whenever that one shall come who I believed thou wast, what time the sudden question I proposed. But longer I my feet already toast, and here have been in this way upside down, than he will plant and stay with reddened feet. For after him shall come a fouler deed, from towards the west a pastor without law, such as befits to cover him and me. New Jason will he be, of whom we read in Maccabees, and as his king was pliant, so he who governs France shall be to this one. I do not know if I were here too bold, that him I answered only in this metre. I pray thee tell me now how great a treasure our Lord demanded of St. Peter first, before he put the keys into his keeping. Truly, he nothing asked but follow me. 
nor Peter nor the rest asked of Matthias, silver or gold, when he by lot was chosen, unto the place the guilty soul had lost. Therefore stay here, for thou art justly punished, and keep safeguard over the ill-gotten money, which caused thee to be valiant against Charles. And were it not that still forbids it me the reverence for the key's superlative thou hadst in keeping in the gladsome life, I would make use of words more grievous still, because your avarice afflicts the world, trampling the good and lifting the depraved. The evangelist you pastors had in mind, when she who sitteth upon many waters to fornicate with kings by him was seen, the same who with the seven heads was born, and power and strength from the ten horns received, so long as virtue to her spouse was pleasing, ye have made yourselves a god of gold and silver, and from the idolater how differ ye, save that he won, and ye a hundred worship. Ah, Constantine, of how much ill was mother, not thy conversion, but that marriage dower which the first wealthy father took from thee. And while I sang to him such notes as these, either that anger or that conscience stung him, he struggled violently with both his feet. I think in sooth that it my leader pleased, with such contented lip he listened ever, unto the sound of true words expressed. Therefore with both his arms he took me up, and when he had me all upon his breast, remounted by the way where he descended, nor did he tire to have me clasped to him, but bore me to the summit of the arch, which from the fourth dyke to the fifth is passage. There tenderly he laid his burden down, tenderly on the crag, uneven and steep, that would have been hard passage for the goats. Thence was unveiled to me another valley. End of Canto 19 Inferno Canto 20 Of a new pain behooves me to make verses and give material to the twentieth canto, of the first song, which is of the submerged. I was already thoroughly disposed to peer down into the uncovered depth which bathed itself with tears of agony, and people saw I through the circular valley, silent and weeping, coming at the pace which in this world the litanies assume. As lower down my sight descended on them, wondrously each one seemed to be distorted from chin to the beginning of the chest, for towards the reins the countenance was turned, and backward it behooved them to advance, as to look forward had been taken from them. Perchance, indeed, by violence of palsy, some one has been thus wholly turned awry, but I ne'er saw it, nor believed it can be. As God may let thee, reader, gather fruit from this thy reading, think now for thyself, how I could ever keep my face unmoistened. When our own image near me I beheld, distorted so the weeping of the eyes, along the fissure bathed the hinder parts. Truly I wept, leaning upon a peak of the hard crag, so that my escort said to me, Art thou, too, of the other fools? Here pity lives when it is wholly dead. Who is a greater reprobate than he, who feels compassion at the doom divine? Lift up, lift up thy head, and see for whom opened the earth before the Thebans' eyes. Wherefore they all cried, Whither rushest thou? Amphieros? Why dost leave the war? And downward seized he not to fall amain, as far as Minos, who lays a hold on all. See, he has made a bosom of his shoulders, because he wished to see too far before him. Behind he looks, and backward goes his way. Behold Tiresias, who his semblance changed, when from a male a female he became, his members being all of them transformed, and afterwards was forced to strike once more the two entangled serpents with his rod, ere he could have again his manly plumes. That Aaron's is, who backs the other's belly, who in the hills of Luni, where there grubs the Cararese who houses underneath. Among the marbles white a cavern had for his abode, whence to behold the stars, and see, the view was not cut off from him. And she there, who is covering up her breasts, which thou beholdest not with loosened tresses, and on that side has all the hairy skin, was Manto, who made quest through many lands, afterwards tarried there where I was born, whereof I would thou list to me a little. After her father had from life departed, and the city of Bacchus had become enslaved, she a long season wandered through the world. Above in beauteous Italy lies a lake, at the Alps' foot that shuts in Germany, over Tyrol, and has the name Benico. By a thousand springs, I think, and more is bathed. Twixt Garda and Valcamonica, Penino, with water that grows stagnant in that lake. Midway a place is where the Trentine pastor, and he of Brescia, and the Veronese might give his blessing if he passed that way. Sitteth Peschiera, 
fortress fair and strong, to front the Brescians and the Bergamasks, where round about the bank descendeth lowest. There of necessity must fall whatever in bosom of Benigo cannot stay, and grows a river down through verdant pastures. Soon as the water doth begin to run, no more Benico is it called, but Mincio, far as Governo, where it falls in Po. Not far it runs before it finds a plain, in which it spreads itself and makes it marshy, and oft is wont in summer to be sickly. Passing that way the virgin pitiless land in the middle of the fen descried, untilled and naked of inhabitants. There to escape all human intercourse she with her servants stayed, her arts to practice, and lived, and left her empty body there. The men thereafter who were scattered round collected in that place, which was made strong by the lagoon it had on every side. They built their city over those dead bones, and after her who first the place selected, Mantua named it, without other omen. Its people once within more crowded were, ere the stupidity of Casalodi, from Pinamonte had received a seat. Therefore I caution thee, if e'er thou hearest originate my city otherwise, no falsehood may the verity defraud. And I, my master, thy discourses are to me so certain, and so take my faith, that unto me the rest would be spent coals. But tell me of the people who are passing, if any one noteworthy thou beholdest, for only unto that my mind reverts. Then said he to me, He who from the cheek thrusts out his beard upon his swarthy shoulders, was, at the time when Greece was void of males, so that there scarce remained one in the cradle, an augur, and with calcans gave the moment an alias, when to sever the first cable. Eryphilus his name was, and so sings my lofty tragedy in some part or other, that knowest thou well, who knowest the whole of it. The next, who is so slender in the flanks, was Michael Scott, who of a verity magical illusions knew the game. Behold Guido Bonatti, behold us Dente, who now unto his leather and his thread would fain have stuck, but he too late repents. Behold the wretched ones who left the needle, the spool, and rock, and made them fortune-tellers. They wrought their magic spells with herb and image. But come now, for already holds the confines of both the hemispheres and under Seville, touches the ocean wave, cane, and the thorns. And yesternight the moon was round already. Thou shouldst remember well it did not harm thee, from time to time within the forest deep. Thus spake he to me, and we walked the while. End of Canto 20 End of Inferno, Canto 16-20 to 20. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Jennifer Crispin, Jefferson City, Missouri. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri. Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Canti 21 through 25. Canto 21. From bridge to bridge thus, speaking other things of which my comedy cares not to sing, we came along and held the summit, when we halted to behold another fissure of malabolgia and other vain laments, and I beheld it marvelously dark. As in the arsenal of the Venetians boils in the winter the tenacious pitch to smear their unsound vessels over again, for sail they cannot, and instead thereof one makes his vessel new, one recocks the ribs of that which many a voyage has made, one hammers at the prow, one at the stern, this one makes oar, and that one cordage twists, another mends the mainsail and the mizzen. Thus, not by fire, but by the art divine, was boiling down below there a dense pitch, which upon every side the bank belied. I saw it, but I did not see within it aught but the bubbles that the boiling raised, and all swell up and resubside compressed. The while below there fixedly I gazed, my leader, crying out, Beware, beware, drew me unto himself from where I stood. Then I turned round as one who is impatient to see what it behoves him to escape in whom a sudden terror doth a man, who, while he looks, delays not his departure, and I beheld behind us a black devil, running long upon the crag, approach. Ah, how ferocious was he in his aspect, and how he seemed to me in action ruthless, with open wings and light upon his feet. His shoulders, which sharp-pointed were and high, the sinner did encumber with both haunches, and he held clutched the sinews of the feet. From off our bridge, he said, O oh, Malebranche, behold one of the elders of St. Zitha. Plunge him beneath, for I return for others unto that town, 
which is well furnished with them. All these are barriters, except Bonturo, now into yes for money there is changed. He hurled him down, and over the hard crag turned round, and never was a mastiff loosened in so much hurry to pursue a thief. The other sank, and rose again face downward, but the demons, under cover of the bridge, cried, Here the Santo Volto has no place. Here swims one otherwise than in the Sergio. Therefore, if for a gaffs thou wishest not, do not uplift thyself above the pitch. They seized him then with more than a hundred rakes. They said, It here behoves thee to dance covered, that, if thou canst, thou secretly mayest pilfer. Not otherwise the cooks their scullions make, immerse into the middle of the cauldron the meat with hooks, so that it may not float, said the good master to me. That it be not apparent thou art here, crouch thyself down behind a jag, that thou mayest have some screen. And for no outrage that is done to me be thou afraid, because these things I know, for once before was I in such a scuffle. Then he passed on beyond the bridge's head, and as upon the sixth bank he arrived, need was for him to have a steadfast front. With the same fury, and the same uproar, as dogs leap out upon a mendicant, who on a sudden begs where he stops, they issued from beneath the little bridge, and turned against him all their grappling irons. But he cried out, Be none of you malignant! Before those hooks of yours lay hold of me, let one of you step forward, who may hear me, and then take counsel as to grappling me. They all cried out, Let Malakoda go, where at once started, and the rest stood still. And he came to him, saying, What avails it? Thinkest thou, Malakota, to behold me advanced into this place, my master said, safe hitherto from all your skill of fence, without the will divine and fate auspicious? Let me go on, for it in heaven is willed that I and others show this savage road. Then was his arrogance so humbled in him, that he let fall his grapnel at his feet, and to the others said, Now strike him not. And unto me, my guide, O thou who sittest among the splinters of the bridge crouched down, securely now return to me again. Wherefore I started and came swiftly to him, and all the devils forward thrust themselves, so that I feared they would not keep their compact. And thus beheld I once afraid the soldiers who issued under safeguard from Caprona, seeing themselves among so many foes. Close did I press myself with all my person beside my leader, and turned not mine eyes from off their countenance, which was not good. They lowered their rakes, and, Wilt thou have me hit him, they said to one another, on the rump? And answered, Yes, see that thou nick him with it. But the same demon who was holding parley with my conductor turned him very quickly and said, Be quiet, be quiet, Scarmiglione, then said to us, You can no farther go forward upon this crag, because is lying all shattered at the bottom of the sixth arch. And if it still doth please you to go onward, pursue your way along upon this rock, near as another crag that yields a path. Yesterday, five hours later than this hour, one thousand and two hundred and sixty-six years were complete, that here the way was broken. I send in that direction some of mine, to see if any one doth err himself. Go ye with them, for they will not be vicious. Step forward, Ali Kino and Calcabrina, began he to cry out, and thou, Cagnazzo and Barbericcia, do thou guide the ten. Come forward, Libicocco and Draghignazzo, and Tusk Ciriato and Graffia Cane, and Farfarello and Mad Rubicante. Search ye all round about the boiling pitch. Let these be safe as far as the next crag, that all unbroken passes o'er the dens. O oh me, what is it, master, that I see? Pray let us go, I said, without an escort, if thou knowest how, since for myself I ask none. If thou art as observant as thy want is, dost thou not see that they do gnash their teeth, and with their brows are threatening woe to us? And he to me, I will not have thee fear. Let them gnash on according to their fancy, because they do it for those boiling wretches. Along the left-hand dike they wheeled about, but first had each one thrust his tongue between his teeth towards their leader for a signal, and he made a trumpet of his rump. Canto 22 I have erewhile seen horsemen moving camp, begin the storming, and their muster make, and sometimes starting off for their escape. Von couriers have I seen upon your land, O Aretines, and foragers go forth, tournaments stricken, and the joustings run, sometimes with trumpets, and sometimes with bells, with kettle drums, and signals of the castles, and with our own, and with outlandish things, but never yet with bagpipes so uncouth did I see horsemen move, nor infantry, nor ship by any sign of land or star. We went upon our way with the ten demons, ah, savage company, but in the church with saints, and in the tavern with the gluttons. Ever upon the pitch was my intent, to see the whole condition of that bulge, 
and of the people who therein were burned. Even as the dolphins, when they make a sign to mariners by arching of the back, that they should counsel take to save their vessel, thus sometimes to alleviate his pain, one of the sinners would display his back, and in less time conceal it, then it lightens. As on the brink of water in a ditch, the frogs stand only with their muzzles out, so that they hide their feet in other bulk. So upon every side the sinners stood, but ever as Barabariche near them came, thus underneath the boiling they withdrew. I saw, and still my heart doth shudder at it, one waiting thus, even as it comes to pass, one frog remains, and down another dives. And Grafia Khan, who most confronted him, grappled him by his tresses, smeared with pitch, and drew him up, so that he seemed an otter. I knew before the names of all of them, so had I noted them when they were chosen, and when they called each other, listened how. O oh, Rubicante, see that thou do lay thy claws upon him, so that thou mayst flay him, cried all together the accursed ones. And I, my master, see to it if thou canst, that thou mayst know who is this luckless wight, thus come into his adversary's hands. Near to the side of him my leader drew, asked of him whence he was, and he replied, I in the kingdom of Navarre was born. My mother placed me servant to a lord, for she had borne me to a ribald knave, destroyer of himself and of his things. Then I domestic was of good King Thibault, and I set me there to practice barratry, for which I pay the reckoning in this heat. And Chirigato, from whose mouth projected on either side a tusk, as in a boar, caused him to feel how one of them could rip. Among malicious cats the mouse had come, but Barbaricha clasped him in his arms and said, Stand ye aside while I enfork him. And to my master he turned round his head. Ask him again, he said, if more thou wish to know from him before someone destroy him. The guide. Now tell then of the other culprits. Knowest thou any one who is a lation under the pitch? And he. I separated lately from one who is a neighbor to it. Would that I still were covered up with him, for I should fear not either claw nor hook. And Libicoco. We have borne too much, and with his grapnel seized him by the arm. So that, by rending, he tore off a tendon. Ike, Dragignazo, wished to pounce upon him. Down at the legs, whence their decurion turned round and around about with evil look. When they again somewhat were pacified of him, who still was looking at his wound, demanded my conductor without stay, who is that one from whom a luckless parting thou sayest thou hast made to come ashore and he replied it was friar gomita of galura vessel of all fraud who had the enemies of his lord in hand and dealt so with them each exults thereat money he took and let them smoothly off as he says and in other offices a barrator was he not mean but sovereign four gatherers with him one Dom Miquel Zanke of Logodoro, and of Sardinia to gossip, never do their tongues feel tired. O oh, me, see that one, how he grinds his teeth. Still farther would I speak, but am afraid, lest he, to scratch my itch, be making ready. And the Grand Provost, turned to Farfarello, who rolled his eyes about as if to strike, said, Stand aside there, thou malicious bird. If you desire either to see or hear, the terror-stricken recommends thereon, Tuscans or Lombards, I will make them come. But let the Malebranque cease a little, so that these may not their revenges fear, and I, down sitting in this very place, for one that I am will make seven come, when I shall whistle, as our custom is, to do whenever one of us comes out. Cagnazzo at these words his muzzle lifted, shaking his head, and said, Just hear the trick which he has thought of, down to throw himself. Whence he, whose snares in great abundance had, responded, I by far too cunning am, when I procure for mine a greater sadness. Ali Keen held not in, but running counter unto the rest, said to him, If thou dive, I will not follow thee upon the gallop, but I will beat my wings above the pitch, the height be left, and be the bank a shield, to see if thou alone dost countervail us. O oh, thou who readest, thou shalt hear new sport. Each to the other side his eyes averted, he first, who most reluctant was to do it. The Navarese selected well his time, planted his feet on land, and in a moment leaped and released himself from their design whereat each one was suddenly stung with shame, but he most who was cause of the defeat. Therefore he moved and cried, Thou art overtaken. But little it availed, for wings could not outstrip the fear. The other one went under, and flying upward, he his breast directed. Not otherwise the duck upon a sudden dives under, when the falcon is approaching, and upward he returneth, cross and weary. 
infuriate at the mockery, Calcabrina, flying behind him, followed close, desirous the other should escape, to have a quarrel. And when the barrator had disappeared, he turned his talons upon his companion, and grappled with him right above the moat. But sooth the other claw was a doughty sparhawk to clapper claw him well, and both of them fell in the middle of the boiling pond. A sudden intercessor was the heat, but nevertheless of rising there was not. To such degree they had their wings maligned. Lamenting with the others, Barabariche made four of them fly to the other side with all their gaffs, and very speedily this side and that they to their post descended. They stretched their hooks toward the pigeon snared, who were already baked within the crust, and in this manner busied did we leave them. Inferno, Canto 23 Silent, alone, and without company, we went, the one in front, the other after, as go the minor friars along their way. Upon the fable of Aesop was directed my thought, by reason of the present quarrel, where he has spoken of the frog and mouse. For Mo and Isa are not more alike than this one is to that, if well we couple end and beginning with a steadfast mind. And even as one thought from another springs, so afterwards from that was born another, which the first fear within me double made. Thus did I ponder, these on our account are laughed to scorn, with injury and scoff so great that much I think it must annoy them. If anger be engrafted on ill will, they will come after us more merciless than dog upon the leveret which he seizes. I felt my hair stand all on end already with terror, and stood backwardly intent when I said, Master, if thou hidest not thyself and me forthwith, of Malibranche I am in dread. We have them now behind us, so I imagine them, I already feel them. And he, if I were made of leaded glass, thine outward image should I not attract, sooner to me than I imprint the inner. Just now thy thoughts came in among my own, with similar attitude and similar face, so that of both one counsel soul I made, if preaventure the right bank so slope, that we to the next Bolgia can descend, we shall escape from the imagined chase. Not yet he finished rendering such opinion, when I beheld them, come with outstretched wings not far remote with will to seize upon us my leader on a sudden sees me up even as a mother who by noise is wakened close beside her sees the enkindled flames who takes her son and flies and does not stop having more care of him than of herself so that she clothes her only with a shift and downward from the top of the hard bank supine he gave him to the pendant rock that one side of the other bulge of walls Ne'er ran so swiftly water through a sluice to turn the wheel of any land-built mill when nearest to the paddles it approaches, as did my master down along that border, bearing me with him on his breast away as his own son, and not as a companion. Hardly the bed of the ravine below his feet had reached, ere they had reached the hill right over us, but he was not afraid, for the high providence which had ordained to place the ministers of the fifth moat, the power of thence departing took from all. The painted people there below we found, who went about with footsteps very slow, weeping, and in their semblance tired and vanquished. They had on mantles with the hoods low down before their eyes, and fashioned of the cut that in Cologne they for the monks were made. Without they gilded are so that it dazzles, but inwardly all leaden and so heavy that Frederick used to put them on of straw. O oh, everlastingly fatiguing mantle! Again we turned us, still to the left hand, along with them, intent on their sad plaint. But owing to the weight, that weary folk came on so tardily that we were new in company at each motion of the haunch. Whence I unto my leader, see thou find someone who may by deed or name be known, and thus in going move thine eye about. And one, who understood the Tuscan speech, cried to us from behind, Stay ye your feet, ye who so run athwart the dusky air. Perhaps thou wilt have for me what thou demandest. Whereat the leader turned him and said, Wait, and then according to his pace proceed. I stopped, and too beheld I show great haste of spirit in their faces to be with me, for the burden in the narrow way delayed them. When they came up, long with an eye askance, 
they scanned me without uttering a word. Then to each other turned and said together, He, by the action of his throat, seems living, and if dead they are, by what privilege go they uncovered by the heavy stole? Then said to me, Tuscan, who to the college of miserable hypocrites are come, do not disdain to tell us who thou art. And I to them, born was I, and grew up in the great town on the fair river of Arno, and with the body am I have always had. But who are ye, in whom there trickles down along your cheeks such grief as I behold, and what pain is upon you that so sparkles? And one replied to me, These orange cloaks are made of lead so heavy that the weights cause in this way their balances to creak. Frati Godenti were we, and Bolognese. I, Catalano, and he, Lodringo, named, and together taken by thy city, as the want is to take one man alone, for maintenance of its peace, and we were such that still it is apparent round Caridingo. O friars, began I, your iniquitous, but said no more, for to mine eyes there rushed one crucified with three stakes on the ground. When me he saw, he writhed himself all over, blowing into his beard with suspirations, and the friar Catalan, who noticed this, said to me, This transfixed one whom thou seest, counsel the Pharisees that it was meet to put one man to torture for the people. Crosswise and naked is he on the path, as thou perceivest, and he needs must feel, whoever passes, first how much he weighs. And in like mode, his father-in-law is punished within this mode, and the others of the council, which for the Jews was a malignant seed. And thereupon I saw Virgilius marvel over him, who was extended on the cross so vilely in eternal banishment. Then he directed to the friar his voice, be not displeased, if granted thee, to tell us if to the right hand any pass slope down by which we too may issue forth from here, without constraining some of the black angels to come and extricate us from this deep. Then he made answer, Nearer than thou hopest, there is a rock that forth from the great circle proceeds and crosses all the cruel valleys, save that at this tis broken and does not bridge it. You will be able to mount up the ruin that sidelong slopes and at the bottom rises. The leader stood a while with head bowed down, then said, The business badly be recounted, who grapples with his hook, the sinners yonder. And the friar, Many of the devil's vices once heard I at Bologna, and among them that he's a liar and the father of lies. Thereat my leader with great strides went on, somewhat disturbed with anger in his looks, whence from the heavy laden I departed, after the prince of his beloved feet. Inferno, Canto 24 In that part of the youthful year wherein the sun his locks beneath Aquarius tempers, and now the nights draw near to half the day. What time the hoarfrost copies on the ground the outward semblance of her sister white, but little lasts the temper of her pen. The husbandsman, whose forage faileth him, rises and looks, and seeth the champagne all gleaming white, Whereat he beats his flank, returns indoors, and up and down laments, like a poor wretch, who knows not what to do. Then he returns, and hope revives again. Seeing the world has changed its countenance in a little time, he takes his shepherd's crook, and forth the little lambs to pasture drives. Thus did the master fill me with alarm, when I beheld his forehead so disturbed, and to the ailment came as soon as the plaster. For as we came unto the ruined bridge, the leader turned to me with that sweet look, which at the mountain's foot I first beheld. His arms he opened after some advisement within himself elected, looking first well at the ruin, and laid hold of me. And even as he who acts and meditates, for I it seems that he provides beforehand, so upward lifting me towards the summit of a huge rock, he scanned another crag, saying, To that one grapple afterwards, but try first if it is such that will hold thee. This was no way for one clothed with a cloak, for hardly we, he light, and I pushed upward, were able to ascend from jag to jag. And had it not been that upon that precinct shorter was the ascent than on the other, he I know not, but I had been dead beat. But because Malabolja towards the mouth of the profoundest well is all inclining, the structure of each valley doth import that one bank rises and the other sinks. Still we arrived at length upon the point wherefrom the last stone breaks itself asunder. The breath was from my lungs so milked away when I was up that I could go no farther. Nay, I sat down upon my first arrival. Now it behoves thee thus to put off sloth, my master said, for sitting upon down or under quilt one cometh not to fame, without in which whoso his life consumes such vestige leaveth of himself on earth, 
as spoken air or in the water foam. And therefore raise thee up, overcome the anguish with spirit that overcometh every battle, if with its heavy body it sink not. A longer stairway it behoves thee mount, tis not enough from these to have departed. Let it avail thee, if thou understand me. Then I uprose, showing myself provided better with breath than I did feel myself, and said, Go on, for I am strong and bold. Upward we took our way along the crag, which jagged was, and narrow, and difficult, and more precipitous far than that before. Speaking I went, not to appear exhausted, whereat a voice from the next moat came forth, not well adapted to articulate words. I know not what it said, though o'er the back I would now is of the arch that passes there, but he seemed moved to anger who was speaking. I was bent downward, but my living eyes could not attain the bottom for the dark, wherefore I, Master, see that thou arrive at the next round, and let us descend the wall, for as from hence I hear and understand not, so I look down, and nothing I distinguish. Other response, he said, I make thee not, except the doing, for the modest asking ought to be followed by the deed in silence. We from the bridge descended at its head, where it connects itself with the eighth bank, and then was manifest to me the bolgia, and I beheld therein a terrible throng of serpents, and of such a monstrous kind that the resemblance still congeals my blood. Let Libya boast no longer with her sand, for if Chalidri, Jaculi, and Fere she breeds, with Chenkri and with Amphisbena, neither so many plagues nor so malignant e'er showed me with all Ethiopia, nor with whatever on the Red Sea is. Among this cruel and most dismal throng, people were running naked and affrighted, without the hope of whole or heliotrope. They had their hands with serpents bound behind them. These riveted upon their reins the tail and head, and were in front of them entwined. And lo, at one who was upon our side, there darted forth a serpent which transfixed him, there where the neck is knotted to the shoulders. Nor oh so quickly ere, nor I was written, as he took fire and burned and ashes wholly behoved it that in falling he became. And when he on the ground was thus destroyed, the ashes drew together, and of themselves into himself they instantly returned. Even thus by the great sages tis confessed the phoenix dies, and then is born again, when it approaches its five hundredth year. On herb or grain it feeds not in its life, but only on tears of incense and omomum, and nard and myrrh are its last winding sheet. And as he is who falls, and knows not how, by force of demons who to earth down drag him, or other oppilation that binds man, when he rises and around him looks, wholly bewildered by the mighty anguish which he has suffered, and in looking sighs, such was that sinner after he had risen. Justice of God, oh how severe it is, that blows like thieves and vengeance poureth down. The guide thereafter asked him who he was, whence he replied, I reigned from Tuscany a short time since into this cruel gorge. A bestial life, and not a human, pleased me, even as the mule I was. I'm Vanni Fucci, beast, and Pistoia was my worthy den. And I unto the guide, tell him to stir not, and ask what crime has thrust him here below, for once a man of blood and wrath I saw him. And the sinner who had heard dissembled not, but unto me directed mind and face, and with a melancholy shame was painted. Then said, it pains me more that thou hast caught me amid this misery where thou seest me than when I from the other life was taken. What thou demandest I cannot deny. So low am I put down because I robbed the sacristy of the fair ornaments, and falsely once was laid upon another. But thou thou mayest not such a sight enjoy, if thou shalt e'er be out of the dark places, thine ears to my announcement open here. Pistoia first of Neri groweth meagre, then Florence doth renew her men and manners. Mars draws a vapor up from Valdi Magra, which is with turbid clouds enveloped round, and with impetuous and bitter tempest for Campo Pichon shall be the battle, when it shall suddenly rend the mist asunder, so that each Bianco shall thereby be smitten. And this I have said that it may give thee pain. Inferno, Canto 25 At the conclusion of his words, the thief lifted his hands aloft with both the figs, crying, Take that, God, for at thee I aim them. From that time forth the serpents were my friends, for one entwined itself about his neck as if it said, I will not thou speak more. And round his arms another, and rebound him, clinching itself together so in front, that with them he could not emotion make. 
pistoia, ah, pistoia, why resolve not to burn thyself to ashes, and so perish, since in ill-doing thou thy seed excellest? Through all the sombre circles of this hell, spirit, I saw not against God so proud, not he who fell at Thebes down from the walls. He fled away and spake no further word, and I beheld a centaur full of rage, come crying out, Where is, where is the scoffer? I do not think Marema has so many serpents as he had all along his back, as far as where our countenance begins, upon the shoulders and behind the nape, with wings wide open was a dragon lying, and he sets fire to all that he encounters. My master said, That one is Caucus, who beneath the rock upon Mount Aventine created oftentimes a lake of blood. He goes not on the same road with his brothers by reason of the fraudulent theft he made, of the great herd which he had near to him whereat his torturous actions ceased beneath the mace of Hercules, who pre-adventure gave him a hundred, and he felt not ten. While he was speaking thus, he had pressed by in spirits thee, had underneath us come, of which nor I was aware, nor my leader. Until what time they shouted, Who are you? On which account our story made a halt and then we were intent on them alone. I did not know them, but it came to pass, as it is wont to happen by some chance, that one to name the other was compelled, exclaiming, Where can Kianfa have remained? Whence I, so that the leader might attend, upward from chin to nose my finger laid, if thou art, reader, slow now to believe what I shall say, it will no marvel be, for I who saw it hardly can admit it. As I was holding, raised on them my brows, behold, a serpent with six feet darts forth in front of one and fastens wholly on him. With middle feet it bound him round the paunch, and with the forward ones his arms it seized, then thrust its teeth through one cheek and the other. The hindermost it stretched upon his thighs, and put its tail through in between the two, and up behind along the reins outspread it. Ivy was never fastened by its barbs unto a tree so, as this horrible reptile upon the other's limbs entwined his own. Then they stuck close as if of heated wax. They had been made, and intermixed their color. Nor one nor the other seemed now what he was. Even as proceedeth on before the flame upward along the paper a brown color, which is not black as yet, and the white dies, the other two looked on, and each of them cried out, O oh, me, Angelo, how thou changest! Behold, thou now art neither two nor one. Already the two heads had become one. When there appeared to us two figures mingled into one face wherein the two were lost. Of the four lists were fashioned the two arms, the thighs and legs, the belly and the chest. Members became that never yet were seen. Every original aspect there was cancelled too, and yet none did the perverted image appear, and such departed with slow pace. Even as a lizard under the great scourge of days, canicular, exchanging hedge, lighting appeareth, if the road it cross. Thus did appear, coming towards the bellies of the two others, a small fiery serpent, livid and black, as is a peppercorn. And in that part whereat is first received our ailment, it one of them transfixed, then downward fell in front of him extended. The one transfixed looked at it, but said not, nay, rather with feet motionless he yawned, just as if sleep or fever had assailed him. He at the serpent gazed, and it at him, 
one through the wound, the other through the mouth, smoked violently, and the smoke commingled. Henceforth be silent, Lucan, where he mentions wretched Sabellius and Nasidius, and wait to hear what now shall be shot forth. Be silent, Ovid of Cadmus and Arethusa, for if him to a snake, her to a fountain, converts he fabling that I grudge him not, because two natures never front to front has he transmuted, so that both the forms to interchange their matter ready were. Together they responded in such wise that to a fork the serpent cleft his tail, and eke the wounded do his feet together. The legs together with the thighs themselves adhered so that in little time the juncture no sign whatever made that was apparent. He with the cloven tail assumed the figure the other one was losing, and his skin became elastic, and the other's hard. I saw the arms draw inward at the armpits, and both feet of the reptile that were short lengthen as much as those contracted were. Thereafter the hind feet together twisted became the member that a man conceals, and of his own the wretch had two created, while both of them the exhalation veils with a new color and engenders hair on one of them, and depiliates the other. The one uprose, and down the other fell through turning, not away their impious lamps, underneath which each one his muzzle changed. He who was standing drew it towards the temples, and from excess of matter which came thither issued the ears from out the hollow cheeks. What did not backward run, and was retained of that excess, made to the face a nose, and the lips thickened far as was befitting. He who lay prostrate thrust his muzzle forward, and backward draws the ears into his head, in the same manner as the snail its horns. And so the tongue, which was entire and apt for speech before, is cleft, and the bi-forked in the other closes up, and the smoke ceases. The soul, which to a reptile had been changed, along the valley hissing takes to flight, and after him the other speaking sputters. Then did he turn upon him his new shoulders and said to the other, I'll have Buoso run, crawling as I have done along this road. In this way I beheld the seventh ballast shift and reshift and here be my excuse the novelty if aught my pen transgress and notwithstanding that mine eyes might be somewhat bewildered and my mind dismayed they could not flee away so secretly but that i plainly saw puccio sciancato and he it was whose soul of three companions which came in the beginning was not changed the other was he whom thou, Gavil, weepest. End of Inferno, Canti 21 to 25. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Aaron Decker The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri Translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow Inferno, Canto 26-30 Canto twenty six. Rejoice, O Florence, since thou art so great that over sea and land thou beatest thy wings, and throughout hell thy name is spread abroad. Among the thieves, five citizens of thine, like these I found, whence shame comes unto me, and thou thereby to no great honour risest. But if when morn is near our dreams are true, Feel shalt thou in a little time from now what Prato, if none other, craves for thee. And if it now were, it were not too soon. Would that it were, seeing it needs must be, for twill aggrieve me more the more I age. 
we went our way, and up along the stairs the bournes had made us to descend before, remounted my conductor and drew me. And following the solitary path among the rocks and ridges of the crag, the foot without the hand sped not at all. Then sorrowed I, and sorrow now again, when I direct my mind to what I saw, and more my genius curb than I am wont, that it may run not unless virtue guide it, so that if some good star or better thing have given me good, I may myself not grudge it. As many as the hind, who on the hill rests at the time when he who lights the world his countenance keeps least concealed from us, while as the fly gives place unto the gnat, seeth the glow-worms down along the valley, perchance there where he ploughs and makes his vintage. With flames as manifold resplendent all was the eighth Bolgia, as I grew aware as soon as I was where the depth appeared. And such as he who with the bears avenged him beheld Elijah's chariot at departing, what time the steeds to heaven erect uprose, for with his eye he could not follow it, so as to see aught else than flame alone, even as a little cloud ascending upward. Thus each along the gorge of the entrenchment was moving, for not one reveals the theft, and every flame a sinner steals away. I stood upon the bridge uprisen to see, so that, if I had seized not on a rock, down had I fallen without being pushed. And the leader, who beheld me so attent, exclaimed, Within the fires the spirits are, each swathes himself with that wherewith he burns. My master, I replied, by hearing thee I am more sure, but I surmised already it might be so, and already wished to ask thee, who is within that fire which comes so cleft at top? It seems uprising from the pyre where was Eteocles with his brother placed. He answered me, Within there are tormented Ulysses and Diomed, and thus together they unto vengeance run as unto wrath. And there within their flame do they lament the ambush of the horse, which made the door whence issued forth the Romans' gentle seed. Therein is wept the craft, for which being dead, Didamia still deplores Achilles, and pain for the palladium there is born. If they within those sparks possess the power to speak, I said, Thee, master, much I pray and repray that the prayer be worth a thousand, if thou make no denial of awaiting until the horned flame shall hither come. Thou seest that with desire I lean towards it. And he to me, Worthy is thy entreaty of much applause, and therefore I accept it, but take heed that thy tongue restrain itself. Leave me to speak, because I have conceived that which thou wishest, for they might disdain perchance, since they were Greeks, discourse of thine. When now the flame had come unto that point, where to my leader it seemed time and place, after this fashion did I hear him speak. O ye who are twofold within one fire, if I deserved of you while I was living, if I deserved of you or much or little when in the world I wrote the lofty verses, do not move on, but one of you declare whither, being lost, he went away to die. Then of the antique flame the greater horn, murmuring, began to wave itself about even as a flame doth which the wind fatigues. Thereafterward, the summit to and fro, moving as if it were the tongue that spake, it uttered forth a voice, and said, when I from Circe had departed, who concealed me more than a year there, near unto Gaeta, or ever yet Aeneas named it so, nor fondness for my son, nor reverence for my old father, nor the due affection which joyous should have made Penelope, could overcome within me the desire I had to be experienced of the world and of the vice and virtue of mankind. But I put forth on the high open sea with one sole ship, and that small company by which I never had deserted been. Both of the shores I saw as far as Spain, far as Morocco, and the Isle of Sardis, and the others which that sea bathes round about. 
I and my company were old and slow, when at that narrow passage we arrived, where Hercules his landmark set as signals, that man no further onward should adventure. On the right hand behind me I left Seville, and on the other already I had left Ceuta. O oh, brothers, who amid a hundred thousand perils, I said, have come unto the west, to this so inconsiderable vigil which is remaining of your senses, still be ye unwilling to deny the knowledge following the sun of the unpeopled world. Consider ye the seed from which ye sprang. Ye were not made to live like unto brutes, but for pursuit of virtue and of knowledge. So eager did I render my companions with this brief exhortation for the voyage that then I hardly could have held them back. And having turned our stern unto the morning, we of the oars made wings for our mad flight, evermore gaining on the larboard side. Already all the stars of the other pole the night beheld, and ours so very low it did not rise above the ocean floor. Five times rekindled, and as many quenched, had been the splendor underneath the moon since we had entered into the deep pass, when there appeared to us a mountain, dim from distance, and it beheld to me so high as I had never any one beheld. Joyful were we, and soon it turned to weeping. For out of the new land a whirlwind rose, and smote upon the forepart of the ship. Three times it made her whirl with all the waters, at the fourth time it made the stern uplift, and the prow downward go, as pleased another, until the sea above us closed again. Canto twenty seven. Already was the flame erect and quiet to speak no more, and now departed from us with the permission of the gentle poet when yet another which behind it came caused us to turn our eyes upon its top by a confused sound that issued from it. As the Sicilian bull that bellowed first with the lament of him, and that was right, who with his file had modulated it, bellowed so with the voice of the afflicted that notwithstanding it was made of brass, still it appeared with agony transfixed, thus by not having any way or issue at first from out the fire, to its own language converted were the melancholy words. But afterwards, when they had gathered way up through the point, giving it that vibration the tongue had given them in their passage out, we heard it said, O thou at whom I aim my voice, and who but now was speaking Lombard, saying, Now go thy way, no more I urge thee. Because I come perchance a little late to stay and speak with me, let it not irk thee, Thou seest it irks not me, and I am burning. If thou but lately into this blind world hast fallen down from that sweet Lycian land, wherefrom I bring the whole of my transgression, say if the Romanuals have peace or war. For I was from the mountains there between Urbino and the yoke where Tiber bursts. I still was downward bent in listening when my conductor touched me on the side, saying, Speak thou this one Alation is. And I, who had beforehand my reply in readiness, forthwith began to speak, O soul that down below there art concealed, Romania thine is not and never has been without war in the bosom of its tyrants, but open war I none have left there now. Ravenna stands as it long years have stood. The eagle of Polenta there is brooding, so that she covers Servia with her vans. The city which once made thou long resistance, and of the French a sanguinary heap, beneath the green paws finds itself again. Verruccio's ancient mastiff and the new, which made such bad disposal of Montaigne, where they are wont to make wimbles of their teeth. The cities of Lamon and Santerno governs the lioncel of the white hare, who changes sides twixt summer time and winter, and that of which the Savio bays the flank even as it lies between the plain and mountain, lives between tyranny and a free state. Now I entreat thee, tell us who thou art. Be not more stubborn than the rest have been, so that thy name hold front there in the world. After the fire a little more had roared in its own fashion, the sharp point it moved this way and that, and then gave forth such breath. 
if i believed that my reply were made to one who the world would e'er return this flame without more flickering would stand still but inasmuch as never from this depth did any one return if i hear true without the fear of infamy i answer i was a man of arms then cordelier believing thus begirt to make amends and truly my belief had been fulfilled but for the high priest who may ill betide who put me back into my former sins and how and wherefore i will have thee here while i was still the form of bone and pulp my mother gave to me the deeds i did were not those of a lion but of a fox the machinations and the covert ways i knew them all and practised so their craft that to the ends of the earth the sound went forth when now unto that portion of mine age i saw myself arrived when each one ought to lower the sails and coil away the ropes that which before had pleased then displeased me and penitent and confessing i surrendered ah woe is me and it would have bestead me the leader of the modern pharisees having a war near unto laerton and not with saracens nor with the jews for each one of his enemies was christian and none of them had been to conquer acre nor merchandising in the sultan's land nor the high office nor the sacred orders in him regarded nor in me that cord which used to make those girt with it more meagre but even as constantine sought out sylvester to cure his leprosy within soracta so this one sought me out as an adept to cure him of the fever of his pride counsel he asked of me and i was silent because his words appeared inebriate and then he said be not thy heart afraid henceforth i thee absolve and thou instruct me how to raise palestrina to the ground heaven have i power to lock and to unlock as thou dost know therefore the keys are two the which my predecessor held not dear then urged me on his weighty arguments there while my silence was the worst advice and said i father since thou washest me of that sin into which i now must fall the promise long with the fulfilment short will make thee triumph in the lofty seat francis came afterward when i was dead for me but one of the black cherubim said to him take him not do me no wrong he must come down among my servitors because he gave the fraudulent advice from which time forth i have been at his hair for who repents not cannot be absolved nor can one both repent and will at once because of the contradiction which consents not o oh, miserable me how i did shudder when he seized on me saying peradventure thou didst not think that i was a logician he bore me into minos who entwined eight times his tail about his stubborn back and after he had bitten it in great rage said of the thievish fire a culprit this wherefore here where thou seest i am lost and vested thus in going i bemoan me when it had thus completed its recital the flame departed uttering lamentations writhing and flapping its sharp pointed horn onward we passed both i and my conductor up o'er the crag above another arch which the moat covers where is paid the fee by those who sowing discord win their burden canto twenty eight whoever could e'en with untrammelled words tell of the blood and of the wounds in full which now i saw by many times narrating each tongue would for a certainty fall short by reason of our speech and memory that have small room to comprehend so much if were again assembled all the people which formerly upon the fateful land of puglia were lamenting for their blood shed by the romans and the lingering war that of the rings made such illustrious spoils as livy has recorded who errs not with those who felt the agony of blows by making counterstand to robert guiscard and all the rest whose bones are gathered still at separano where a renegade was each apulian and at tagliacozzo where without arms the old alardo conquered and one his limb transpierced and one lopped off would show it would be nothing to compare with the disgusting mode of the ninth bolgia a cask by losing centerpiece or cant was never shattered so as i saw one rent from the chin to where one breaketh wind 
Between his legs was hanging down his entrails. His heart was visible, and the dismal sack that maketh excrement of what is eaten. While I was all absorbed in seeing him, he looked at me and opened with his hands his bosom, saying, See how now I rend me, how mutilated see is Mahomet. In front of me doth Ali weeping go, cleft in the face from forelock unto chin, and all the others whom thou here beholdest, disseminators of scandal and of schism while living were, and therefore are cleft thus. A devil is behind here, who doth cleave us thus cruelly, unto the falcon's edge, putting again each one of us this ream when we have gone around the doleful road, by reason that our wounds are closed again ere any one in front of him repass. But who art thou that musest on the crag perchance to postpone going to the pain that is adjudged upon thine accusations? Nor death hath reached him yet, nor guilt doth bring him, my master made reply, to be tormented but to procure him full experience, me who am dead behooves it to conduct him down here through hell from circle unto circle, and this is true as that I speak to thee. More than a hundred were there when they heard him, who in the moat stood still to look at me, through wonderment oblivious of their torture. Now say to Fra Dolcino, then, to arm him, thou who perhaps wilt shortly see the sun, if soon he wish not here to follow me, so with provisions, that no stress of snow may give the victory to the Novaris, which otherwise to gain would not be easy. After one foot to go away he lifted, this word did Mohammed say unto me, then to depart upon the ground he stretched it. Another one who had his throat pierced through, and nose cut off close underneath the brows, had no longer but a single ear, staying to look in wonder with the others before the others did his gillet open, which outwardly was red in every part, and said, O thou whom guilt doth not condemn, and whom I once saw up in Latian land, unless too great similitude deceive me, call to remembrance Pier de Medicina, if e'er thou see again the lovely plain that from Vercelli slopes to Marcabo, and make it known to the best two of Fano, to Messer Guido and Angiolello likewise, that if foreseeing here be not in vain, cast over from their vessel shall they be, and drown near unto the Catolica, by the betrayal of a tyrant fell. Between the isles of Cyprus and Majorca, Neptune ne'er yet beheld so great a crime, neither of pirates nor argolic people. That traitor who sees only with one eye and holds the land, which some one here with me would fain be fasting from the vision of, will make them come unto a parley with him. Then will do so, that to Focara's wind they shall not stand in need of vow or prayer. And I to him... Show to me and declare, if thou wouldst have me bear up news of thee, who is this person of the bitter vision? Then did he lay his hand upon the jaw of one of his companions, and his mouth oped, crying, This is he, and he speaks not. This one being banished, every doubt submerged in Caesar by affirming the forearmed, always with detriment, allowed delay. Oh, how bewildered unto me appeared, with tongue asunder in his windpipe slit, Curio, who in speaking was so bold, and one who both his hands dissevered had, the stumps uplifting through the murky air so that the blood made horrible his face, cried out, Thou shalt remember Mosca also, who said, Alas, a thing done has an end, which was an ill seed for the Tuscan people. And death unto thy race, thereto I added, whence he accumulating woe on woe, departed like a person sad and crazed. But I remained to look upon the crowd, and saw a thing which I should be afraid without some further proof even to recount. If it were not the good conscience reassures me, that good companion which emboldens man beneath the hauberk of its feeling pure. I truly saw, and still I seem to see it, a trunk without a head walk in like manner as the others of the mournful herd, and by the hair it held the head dissevered, hung from the hand in fashion of a lantern, and that upon us gazed and said, O oh, me! 
it of itself made to itself a lamp. And they were two in one, and one in two. How that can be, he knows who ordains it. When it was come close to the bridge's foot, it lifted high its arm with all the head to bring more closely unto us its words, which were, Behold now the sore penalty, thou who dost breathing go to the dead beholding. Behold if any be as great as this. And so that thou may carry news of me, know that Bertram de Bourne am I, the same who gave to the young king the evil comfort. I made the father and the son rebellious. Achitophel not more with Absalom and David did with his accursed goadings. Because I parted persons so united, parted do I now bear my brain, alas, from its beginning which is in this trunk. Thus is observed in me the counterpoise. Canto 29 The many people and the diverse wounds these eyes of mine had so inebriated that they were wishful to stand still and weep. But said Virgilus, what dost thou still gaze at? Why is thy sight still riveted down there among the mournful mutilated shades? Thou hast not done so at the other bulge. Consider, if to count them thou believest, that two and twenty miles the valley winds, and now the moon is underneath our feet. Henceforth the time allotted us is brief, and more is to be seen than what thou seest. If thou hadst, I made answer thereupon, attended to the cause for which I looked, perhaps a longer stay thou wouldst have pardoned. Meanwhile my guide departed, and behind him I went, already making my reply, and super-adding, In that cavern where I held mine eyes, with such attention fixed, I think a spirit of my blood laments the sin which down below there cost so much. Then said the master, be no longer broken thy thought from this time forward upon him. Attend elsewhere, and let there him remain. For I saw below the little bridge pointing at thee, and threatening with his finger fiercely, and heard him call Jerry de Bello. So holy at that time wast thou impeded by him who formerly held Altaforte. Thou didst not look that way, so he departed. O oh, my conductor, his own violent death, which is not yet avenged for him, I said, by any who is share in the shame, made him disdainful, whence he went away, as I imagine, without speaking to me, and thereby made me pity him the more. Thus did we speak as far as the first place upon the crag, which the next valley shows down to the bottom, if there were more light. When we were now right over the last cloister of Malabolge, so that its lay brothers could manifest themselves unto our sight. Diverse lamentings pierced me through and through, which with compassion had their arrows barbed, whereat mine ears I covered with my hands. What pain would be if from the hospitals of Valediciana, twixt July and September, and of Maremma and Sardinia, all the diseases in one moat were gathered, such was it here, and such a stench came from it as from putrescent limbs is wont to issue. We had descended on the furthest bank from the long crag, upon the left hand still, and then more vivid was my power of sight down towards the bottom, where the ministress of the High Lord, Justice Infallible, punishes forgers, which she here records. I do not think a sadder sight to see was in Aegina, the whole people sick. When was the air so full of pestilence, the animals down to the little worm all fell, and afterwards the ancient people, according as the poets have affirmed, were from the seat of ants restored again? Then was it to behold through that dark valley the spirits languishing in diverse heaps? This on the belly, that upon the back one of the other lay, and others crawling shifted themselves among the dismal road. We step by step went onward without speech, gazing upon and listening to the sick who had not strength enough to lift their bodies. I saw two sitting leaned against each other, as leans in heating platter against platter, from head to foot bespotted o'er with scabs. 
and never saw I plied a curry comb by stable boy for whom his master waits, or him who keeps awake unwillingly, as every one was plying fast the bite of nails upon himself, for the great rage of itching which no other sucker had. And the nails downward with them dragged the scab, in fashion as a knife the scales of bream, or any other fish that has them largest. O oh, thou that with thy fingers dost dismail thee, began my leader unto one of them, and makest of them pincers now and then. Tell me if any Latian is with those who are herein. So may thy nails suffice thee to all eternity unto this work. Latians are we, whom thou so wasted seest, both of us here, one weeping made reply. But who art thou that questionest about us? And said the guide, one am I who descends down with this living man from cliff to cliff, and I intend to show hell unto him. Then broken was their mutual support, and trembling each one turned himself to me, with others who had heard him by rebound. Holy to me did the good's master gather, saying, Say unto them whate'er thou wishest. And I began, since he would have it so. So may your memory not steal away in the first world from out the minds of men, but so may it survive neath many suns. Say to me who ye are, and of what people. Let not your foul and loathsome punishment make you afraid to show yourselves to me. I of Arezzo was, one made reply, and Albert of Siena had me burned. But what I died for does not bring me here. Tis true, I said to him, speaking in jest, that I could rise by flight into the air, and he who had conceit but little wit would have me show to him the art and only because no Daedalus I made him, made me be burned by one whom held him as his son. But unto the last bulgia of the ten, for alchemy which in the world I practiced, Minos, who cannot err, has me condemned. And to the poet said I, Now was ever so vain a people as the Sienese? Not for a certainty the French by far. Whereat the other leper, who had heard me, replied unto my speech, taking out Stricca, who knew the art of moderate expenses, and Niccolo, who the luxurious use of cloves discovered earliest of all, within that garden where such seed takes root, and taking out the band, among whom was squandered Caccia de Asian, his vineyards and vast woods, and where his wit the Abagliado preferred. But that thou know who thus doth second thee against the Sienese, Make sharp thine eye towards me, so that my face well answer thee. And thou shalt see I am Capoccio's shade, who meddles falsified by alchemy. Thou must remember, if I well descry thee, how I a skilful ape of nature was. Canto 30 T'was at the time when Juno was enraged for Semela against the Theban blood, as she already more than once had shown so reft of reason Athamas became, that seeing his own wife with children twain walking encumbered upon either hand, he cried, Spread out the nets, that I may take the lioness and her whelps upon the passage, and then extended his unpitying claws, seizing the first who had the name Learchus, and whirled him round and dashed him on a rock, and she, with the other burthen, drowned herself. And at the time when fortune downward hurled the Trojans' arrogance, that all things dared, so that the king was with his kingdom crushed, Hecubus sad, disconsolate, and captive, when lifeless she beheld Polyxena, and of her Polydorus on the shore of ocean was the dolorous one aware. Out of her senses like a dog she barked, so much the anguish had her mind distorted. But not of Thebes, the Furies, nor the Trojan were ever seen in any one so cruel and goading beasts, and much more human members, as I beheld two shadows pale and naked, who, biting in the manner, ran along that a boar does. When from the sty turned loose, one to Capoccio came, and by the nape seized with his teeth his neck, so that in dragging it made his belly grate the solid bottom. And the Aretine, who trembled, had remained, said to me, That mad sprite is Gianni Shichi, and raving goes thus harrying other people. Oh, said I to him, so may not the other set teeth on thee. Let it not weary thee to tell us who it is, ere it dart hence. 
and he to me that is the ancient ghost of the nefarious myrrha who became beyond all rightful love her father's lover she came to sin with him after this manner by counterfeiting of another's form as he who goeth yonder undertook that he might gain the lady of the herd to counterfeit in himself busso donati making a will and giving it due form and after the two maniacs had passed on whom i held mine eye i turned it back to look upon the other evil-born i saw one made in fashion of a lute if he had only had the groin cut off just at the point at which a man is forked the heavy dropsy that so disproportions the limbs with humours which it ill concocts that the face corresponds not to the belly compelled him so to hold his lips apart as does the hectic who because of thirst one towards the chin the other upward turns o ye who without any torment are and why i know not in the world of woe he said to us behold and be attentive unto the misery of master adam i had while living much of what i wished and now alas a drop of water crave the rivulets that from the verdant hills of cassentin descend down into arno making their channels to be cold and moist ever before me stand and not in vain for far more doth their image dry me up than the disease which strips my face of flesh the rigid justice that chastises me draweth occasion from the place in which i sinned to put the more my size in flight there's romena where i counterfeited the currency imprinted with the baptist for which i left my body burned above but if i here could see the tristful soul of guido or as alessandro or their brother for brandis fount i would not give the sight one is within already if the raving shades that are going round about speak truth but what avails it me whose limbs are tied if i were only still so light that in a hundred years i could advance one inch i had already started on the way seeking him out among this squalid folk although the circuit be eleven miles and be not less than half a mile across for them am i in such a family they did induce me into coining florins which had three carats of impurity and i to him who are the two poor wretches that smote like unto a wet hand in winter lying there close upon thy right hand confines i found them here replied he when i reigned into this chasm and since they have not turned nor do i think they will for evermore one the false woman is who accused joseph the other false sinon greek of troy from acute fever they send forth such reek and one of them who felt himself annoyed at being peradventure named so darkly smote with the fist upon his hardened paunch it gave a sound as if it were a drum and master adam smote him in the face with arm that did not seem to be less hard saying to him although be taken from me all motion for my limbs that heavy are i have an arm unfettered for such need whereat he answer made when thou didst go unto the fire thou hadst it not so ready but hadst it so and more when thou wast coining the dropsicle thou sayest true in that but thou wast not so true a witness there where thou wast questioned of the truth at troy if i spake false thou falsifiest the coin said sinon and for one fault i am here and thou for more than any other demon remember perjurer about the horse he made reply who had the swollen belly and rueful be it thee the whole world knows it rueful to thee the thirst wherewith cracks thy tongue the greek said and the putrid water that hedges so thy paunch before thine eyes then the false coiner so is gaping wide thy mouth for speaking evil as tis wont because if i have thirst and humour stuff me thou hast the burning and the head that aches and to lick up the mirror of narcissus thou wouldst not want words many to invite thee in listening to them i was wholly fixed when said the master to me now just look for little wants it that i quarrel with thee when i heard him in anger speak to me i turned me round towards him with such shame that still it eddies through my memory and as he is who dreams of his own harm who dreaming wishes it may be a dream so that he craves what is as if it were not 
such I became, not having power to speak, for to excuse myself I wished, and still excused myself, and did not think I did it. Less shame doth wash away a greater fault, the master said, than this of thine has been, therefore thyself disburden of all sadness, and make account that I am I beside thee, if e'er it come to pass that fortune bring thee where there are people in a like dispute. For a base wish it is to wish to hear it. End of Inferno, Canto 26 to 30. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Marlo Dan, Forbidden Dragon. Blogspot. Com. The Divine Comedy by Dante Alighieri, translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Inferno, Canto Thirty One to Thirty Four. Inferno, Canto Thirty One. One and self-same tongue first wounded me, so that it tinged the one cheek and the other, and then held out to me the medicine. Thus do I hear that once Achilles' spear, his and his father's, used to be the cause first of a sad and then a gracious boon. We turned our backs upon the wretched valley, upon the bank that girds it round about, going across it without any speech. There it was less than night, and less than day, so that my sight went little in advance, but I could hear the blare of a loud horn, so loud it would have made each thunder faint, which, counter to it following its way, mine eyes directed wholly to one place. After the dolorous discomfiture, when Charlemagne the holy emprise lost, so terribly Orlando sounded not. Short while my head turned thitherward I held, When many lofter towers I seemed to see, Where had I, master, say, what town is this? And he to me, because thou peerest forth, Art worth the darkness at too great a distance, It happens that thou errest in thy fancy. Well shalt thou see, if thou arrivest there, How much the sense deceives itself by distance. Therefore a little faster spur thee on. Then tenderly he took me by the hand, and said, Before we farther have advanced, That the reality may seem to thee less strange, Know that these are not towers, but giants, And they are in the well, around the bank, From navel downward, one and all of them. As when the fog is vanishing away, Little by little doth the sight refigure, where the mist that crowds the air conceals, so piercing through the dense and darksome air, more and more near approaching toward the verge, my error fled, and fear came over me, because as on its circular parapets Montenegrione crowns itself with towers, even thus the margin which surround the well, with one half of their bodies turreted, the horrible giants whom Jove menaces, even now from out the heavens when he thunders. And I of one already saw the face, shoulders and breast and great part of the belly, and down along his sides both of his arms. Certainly nature, when she left the making of animals like these, by taking such executors from Mars, and if of elephants and whales she doth not repent her, Whosoever looketh subtlety, more just and more discreet, will hold her for it. For where the argument of intellect is added unto evil, will, and power, no rampart can the people make against it. His face appeared to me as long and large as is at Rome the pine-cone of St. Peter's, and in proportion where the other bones, so that the margin, which an apron was, down from the middle, showed so much of him above it, that to reach up to his hair, three Frieslanders in vain had vaulted them, 
for I beheld thirty great palms of him, down from the place where man is mantle buckles. Raphael me amorec isabari almai, began to clamor the ferocious mouth, to which were not befitting sweeter psalms. And on to him, my guide, soul idiotic, keep to thy horn and vent thyself with that, when wrath or other passion touches thee. Search round thy neck, and thou wilt find the belt which keeps it fastened, O bewildered soul, and see it where it bars thy mighty breast. Then said to me, He doth himself accuse, This one is Nimrod, By whose evil thought one language in the world Is still not used. Here let us leave him and not speak in vain, For even such to him is every language as his to others which to none is known. Therefore a longer journey did we make, turned to the left in a crossbow shot, off we found another far more fierce and large. In binding him who might the master be, I cannot say, but he had pinioned close behind the right arm and in front the other, with chains that held him so begirt about from the neck down that on the part uncovered it wound itself as far as the fifth gyre. This proud one wished to make experiment on his own power against the supreme Jove, my leader said, whence he has such a guerdon. Enfilades is his name. He showed great prowess. What time the giants terrified the gods. The arms he wielded, never more he moves. And I to him, if possible, I should wish that of the measureless Briarus these eyes of mine might have experience. Whence he replied, Thou shalt behold Antaeus, close by here, who can speak and is unbound, who at the bottom of all crime shall place us. Much farther yon is he whom thou wouldst see, and he is bound and fashioned like to this one save that he seems in aspect more ferocious. There never was an earthquake of such might that it could shake a tower so violently as Enfilates suddenly shook himself. Then was I more afraid of death than ever, for nothing more was needful than the fear if I had not beheld the manacles. Then we proceeded farther in advance, and to Antines came, who full five ells without the head, forth issued from the cavern. O thou, who in the valley fortunate, which Scipio the hair of glory made when Hannibal turned back with all his hosts, once broughtst a thousand lions for thy prey, and who hast thou been at the mighty war among thy brothers, some it seems still think, the sons of earth the victory would have gained, place us below, nor be disdainful of it, there where the colt doth lock Cochitus up. Make us not go to Tidius, nor Typhius. This one can give of that where here is long for, therefore stoop down and do not curl thy lip. Still in the world can he restore thy fame, because he lives and still expects long life, if to itself grace call him not untimely. So said the master, and in haste the other, his hands extended and took up my guide, hands whose great pressure Hercules once felt. Virgilius, when he had felt himself embraced, said on to me, Draw nigh, that I may take thee, then of himself and me one bundle made. As seems the Caricenda, to behold beneath the leaning side where goes a cloud above it so that opposite it hangs. Such did Antaeus seem to me, who stood, watching to see him stoop, and then it was I could have wished to go some other way. But lightly in the abyss, which swallows up Judas with Lucifer, he put us down, nor thus bowed downward may he there delay. But... As a mass does in a ship, uprose. Inferno, Canto 32 
If I had rhymes both rough and stridulous, as were appropriate to the dismal hole down upon which thrust all the other rocks, I would press out the juice of my conception more fully, but because I have them not, not without fear, I bring myself to speak, for tis no enterprise to take in jest to sketch the bottom of all the universe, nor for a tongue that cries Mama and Babo. But may these ladies help this verse of mine, who helped Amphion in enclosing Thebes, that from the fact the word be not diverse. O rabble ill-begotten above all, who are in the place to speak of which is hard, t'were better ye had here been sheep or goats, when we were down within the darksome well beneath the giant's feet, but lower far, and I was scanning still the lofty wall, I heard it said to me, Look how thou steppest, take heed thou do not trample with thy feet the heads of the tired, miserable brothers. Whereat I turned me round, and saw before me and underfoot a lake, that from the frost the semblance had of glass and not of water. So thick a veil ne'er made upon its current in winter-time Danube in Austria, nor there beneath the frigid sky the dawn. As was here, so that if Tabernick had fallen upon it, or Pytropania, and the edge would not have given a creak, as to croak the frog doth place himself with muzzle out of water, when it is dreaming of gleaning oftentimes the peasant girl. Live it as far down as where the shame appears, where the disconsolate shades within the ice, setting their teeth onto the note of storks. Each one is countenance held downward bent, from mouth the cold, from eyes the doleful heart, among them witness of itself procures. When round about me, somewhat I had looked, I downward turned me, and saw two so close the hair upon their heads together mingled. Ye who so strain your breasts together, tell me, I said, who are you? And they bent their necks, and when to me their faces they had lifted, their eyes, which first were only mist within, gushed o'er the eyelids, and the frost congealed the tears between, and locked them up again. Clamp never bound together wood with wood so strongly, whereat they, like two he-goats, butted together, so much wrath o'ercame them. And one, who had by reason of the cold lost both his ears, still with his visage downward, said, Why dost thou so mirror thyself in us? If thou desire to know who these two are, the valley whence Bizzino descends, belong to them, and to their father, Albert. They from one body came, and all Cadia thou shalt search through, and shall not find a shade more worthy to be fixed in gelatin. Not he in whom were broken breast and shadow at one and the same blow by Arthur's hand. For Cadia not, not he who me encumbers, so with his head I see no farther forward, and bore the name of Sassel Mascheroni. Well knowest thou who he was, if thou art Tuscan, and that thou put me not to further speech, know that I, Camusion de Pazzi, was and wait Carlino to exonerate me. Then I beheld a thousand faces, made purple with cold, whence o'er me came a shudder, and evermore will come at frozen ponds, and while we were advancing towards the middle, where everything of weight unites together, and I was shivering in the eternal shade, whether twill or destiny or chance I know not, but in walking among the heads I struck my foot hard in the face of one. Weeping he growled, Why dost thou trample me, unless thou comest to increase the vengeance of Monteperti? Why dost thou molest me? And I, my master, now wait here for me, that I through him may issue from a doubt. Then thou mayest hurry me, as thou shalt wish. 
the leader stopped, and to that one I said, who was blaspheming venomously still, Who art thou that thus reprehendest others? Now who art thou that goest through Antinoria smiting, replied he, other people's cheeks, so that if thou wert living to were too much? Living I am, and dear to thee it may be, was my response, if thou demandest fame, that mid the other notes thy name I place. And he to me, for the reverse I long, take thyself hence and give me no more trouble, for ill thou knowest to flatter in this hollow. Then by the scalp behind I seized upon him and said, It must needs be thou name thyself, or not a hair remain upon thee here. Whence he to me, Though thou strip off my hair, I will not tell thee who I am, nor show thee, if on my head a thousand times thou fall. I had his hair and hand already twisted, and more than one shock of it had pulled out, he barking, with his eyes held firmly down. When cried another, What doth ail thee, Boca? Is not enough to clatter with thy jaws, but thou art, but thou must bark. What devil touches thee? Now, said I, I care not to have thee speak, accursed traitor, for on to thy shame I will report of the voracious news. Be gone, replied he, and tell what thou wilt, but be not silent if thou issue hence of him who had just now his tongue so prompt. He weepeth here the silver of the French I saw, Thus canst thou praise it, him of Dura, there where the sinners stand out in the cold. If thou shouldst question be who else was there, thou hast beside thee him of Beccaria, of whom the gore at Florence slid asunder. Gianni del Salendier, I think, may be yonder with Ganelian and Tibelido, who opted for Zania when the people slept. Already we had gone away from him, when I beheld two frozen in one hole, so that one head a hood was to the other, and even as bread through hunger is devour the uppermost, and the other set his teeth, there where the brain is to the nape united. Not in another fashion Tydeus nod the temples of Menelipidus in disdain, that that one did the skull, and the other things. O thou who showest by such bestial sign thy hatred against him whom thou art eating, tell me the wherefore, said I, with this compact, that if thou rightfully of him complain in knowing who ye are and his transgression, I in the world above repay thee for it, if that wherewith I speak be not dried up. Inferno Canto thirty three. His mouth uplifted from his grim repast, that sinner wiping it upon the hair of the same head that he behind had wasted. Then he began, Thou wilt that I renew the desperate grief which wrings my heart already, to think of only ere I speak it. But if my words be seed that may bear fruit of infamy to the traitor whom I gnaw, Speaking and weeping shalt thou see together. I know not who thou art, nor by what mode thou hast come down here, but a Florentine thou seemest to me truly, when I hear thee. Thou hast to know I was Count Ugolino, and this one was Ruggieri the Archbishop. Now I will tell thee why I am such a neighbor. That by the effect of his malicious thoughts, Trusting in him I was made prisoner, and after put to death I need not say. But ne'ertheless, what thou canst not have heard, that is to say, how cruel was my death, here shalt thou, and shalt know if he has wronged me. A narrow perforation in the mew which bears because of me the title of famine, and which others still must be locked up had shown me through its opening many moons already, when I dreamed the evil dream which of the future rent for me the veil. This one appeared to me as lord and master, 
hunting the wolf and whelps upon the mountain for which the pisons cannot look a see with sleuth hounds gaunt and eager and well trained gliandi with sistamondi and lalafrianchi had sent me out before him to the front after brief course seemed unto me forspent the father and the sons and with sharp tushes it seemed to me i saw their flanks ripped open when i before the morrow was awake moaning amid their sleep i heard my sons who with me were and asking after bread cruel indeed art thou if yet thou grieve not thinking of what my heart foreboded me and weepest thou not what art thou wont to weep at they were awake now and the hour drew nigh at which our food used to be brought to us and through his dream was each one apprehensive and i heard locking up the under door of the horrible tower whereat without a word i gazed into the faces of my sons i wept not i within so turned to stone they wept and darling little ansel mine said thou dost gaze so father what doth ail thee still not a tear i shed nor answer made all of that day nor yet the night thereafter until another sun rose on the world as now a little glimmer made its way into the dolorous prison and i saw upon four faces my very own aspect both of my hands in agony i bit and thinking that i did it from desire of eating on a sudden they uprose and said they father much less pain twill give us if thou do eat of us thyself did clothe us with this poor flesh and do thou strip it off i calm me then not to make them more sad that day we all were silent and the next ah abdurrah earth wherefore didst thou not open when we had come unto the fourth day gado threw himself down outstretched before my feet saying my father why dost thou not help me and there he died and as thou seest me i saw the three fall one by one between the fifth day and the sixth whence i betook me already blind a groping over each and three days called them after they were dead then hunger did what sorrow could not do when he had said this with his eyes distorted the wretched skull resumed he with his teeth which as a dog's upon the bone were strong ah pisa thou uproarium of the people of the fair land there where the sea doth sound since slow to punish thee thy neighbors are let the capabria and the gorgana move and make a hedge across the mouth of arno that every person in thee it may drown for if count ogulino had the fame of having in thy castles thee betrayed thou shouldst not on such cross have put his sons guiltless of any crime thou modern thebes their youth made ulogosioni and regatta and the other two my song doth name above we pass still further onward where the ice and nether people ruggedly in swaths not downward turned but all of them reversed weeping itself there does not let them weep and grief that finds a barrier in the eyes turns itself inward to increase the anguish because the earliest tears a cluster form and in the manner of a crystal visor fill all the cup beneath the eyebrow full and notwithstanding that as in a callous because of cold all sensibility its station had abandoned in my face still it appeared to me i felt some wind whence i my master who sets this in motion is not below here every vapour quenched whence he to me full soon shalt thou be where thine eye shall answer make to thee of this seeing the cause which raineth down the blast and one of the wretches of the foul crust cried out to us 
O oh, soul so merciless that the last port is given on to you, lift from mine eyes the rigid veils that I may vent the sorrow which impregnes my heart a little, ere the weeping recongeal. Whence I to him, if thou wouldst have me help thee, say who thou wast, and if I free thee not, may I go to the bottom of the ice. Then he replied, I am Friar Elbigerio, he I am of the fruit of the bad garden, who here a date am getting for my fig. Oh, said I to him, now art thou too dead, and he to me, how may my body fare up in the world, no knowledge I possess. Such an advantage has this Potamia, that sometimes the soul descendeth here sooner than a tropos in motion sets it, and that thou mayest more willingly remove from off my countenance these glassy tears, know that as soon as my soul betrays, as I have done, his body by a demon is taken from him, who thereafter rules it until his time has wholly been revolved. Itself down rushes into such a cistern, and still perchance above appears the body of yonder shade that winters here behind me. This thou shouldst know if thou hast just come down. It is Sir Branca de Oria, and many years have passed away since he is thus locked up. I think, said I to him, thou dost deceive me, for Branca de Oria is not dead as yet and eats and drinks and sleeps and puts on clothes. In mode above, said he, of Malbranche, there were as boiling the tenacious pitch, and yet has Michael Zanse not arrived. When this one left a devil in his steed, in his own body, and one near of kin who made together with him the betrayal, but hitherward stretched out thy hand forthwith, open my eyes, and open them I did not and to be rude to him was courtesy. Ah, Genesee, ye man at variance with every virtue, full of every vice, wherefore are ye not scattered from the world? For with the vilest spirit of Romagania I found of you one such who for his deeds and soul, already in Cocytus baths, and still above in body, seems alive. Inferno, Canto thirty four. Vixilla regis prodiant inferni, toward us. Therefore look in front of thee, my master said, if thou discernest him. As when there breathes a heavy fog, or when our hemisphere is darkening into night, appears far off a mill that wind is turning. Methought that such a building then I saw, and, for the wind, I drew myself behind my guide, because there was no other shelter. Now was I, and with fear in verse I put it, there where the shades were wholly covered up, and glimmered through like onto straws and glass, some prone or lying, others stand erect, this with the head and that one with the soles. Another bow-like, face to feet inverts, When in advance so far we had proceeded, That it my master pleased to show me, The creature who once had the beauteous semblance. He from before me moved, and made me stop, Saying, Behold this, and behold the place Where thou with fortitude must arm thyself. How frozen I became, and powerless then! Ask it not, reader, for I write it not, because all language would be insufficient. I did not die, and I alive remain not. Think for thyself now, hast thou aught of wit, what I became, being of both deprived. The emperor of the kingdom Dolores, from his mid-breast forth issued from the ice, and better with a giant I compare, than do the giants with those arms of his. Consider now how great must be that whole, which on to such a part conforms itself. 
were he as fair once as he is now foul, and lifted up his brow against his Maker, which may proceed from him all tribulation. Oh, what a marvel it appeared to me when I beheld three faces on his head, the one in front, and that vermilion was, two were the others that were joined with this, above the middle part of either shoulder, and they were joined together at the crest, and the right hand one seemed twixt white and yellow, the left was such to look upon as those who come from where the Nile falls valleyward. Underneath each came forth two mighty wings, such as it befitting were so great a bird. Sails of the sea I never saw so large. No feathers had they, but as of a bat their fashion was, and he was waving them, so that three winds proceeded forth therefrom. Thereby Cocytus wholly was congealed, with six eyes did he weep, and down three chins trickled the tear-drops in the bloody drivel. At every mouth he with his teeth was crunching a sinner, in the manner of a break, so that he three of them tormented thus. To him in front the biting was as naught unto the clawing, for sometimes the spine utterly stripped of all the skin remained. That soul up there, which has the greatest pain, the master said, is Judas Iscariot. With head inside he plies his legs without. Of the two others, who head downward are, the one who hangs from the black jowl is Brutus. See how he rise himself and speaks no word. And the other, who so stalwart seems, is Cassius. But night is reascending, and tis time that we depart, for we have seen the whole. As seemed him good, I clasped him round the neck, and he the vantage seized of time and place, and when the wings were opened wide apart, he laid fast hold upon the shaggy sides, from fell to fell descended downward, then between the thick hair and the frozen crust. When we were come to where the thigh revolves, exactly on the thickness of the haunch, the guide, with labor and with hard-drawn breath, turned round his head where he had had his legs, and grappled to the hair, as one who mounts, so that to hell I thought we were returning. Keep fast thy hold, for by such stairs as these, the master said, panting as one fatigued, must we perforce depart from so much evil. Then through the opening of a rock he issued, and down upon the margin seated me. Then towards me he outstretched his weary step. I lifted up mine eyes, and thought to see Lucifer in the same way I had left him, and I beheld him upward hold his legs. And if I then became disquieted, let stolid people think who do not see what the point is beyond which I had passed. Rise up, the master said, upon thy feet. The way is long, and difficult the road, and now the sun to middle tears returns. It was not any palace corridor, there where we were, but dungeon natural, with floor uneven and unease of light. Ere from the abyss I tear myself away, my master, said I when I had arisen, to draw me from an error, speak a little. Where is the ice, and how is this one fixed thus upside down, and how in such short time from eve to morn has the sun made his transit? And he to me, thou still imaginest thou art beyond the centre, where I grasp the hair of the fell worm who minds the world, that side thou wast, so long as I descended, which round I turned me thou didst pass the point to which things heavy draw from every side, and now beneath the hemisphere art come, 
opposite which overhangs the vast dry land, and neath whose cope was put to death. The man who without sin was born and lived, thou hast thy feet upon the little spear which makes the other face of the Judicia. Here it is morn when it is evening there, and he who with his hair a stairway made us, still fixed remaineth as he was before. Upon this side he fell down out of heaven, and all the land that Willem here emerged, for fear of him, made of the sea a veil, and came to our hemisphere, and peradventure to flee from him, what on this side appears at the place vacant here and back recoiled. A place there is below, from Beelzebub, as far receding as the tomb abstends, which not by sight is known, but by sound. Of a small rivulet that there descendeth through chasm within the stone, which is gnawed with course that winds about and slightly falls, the guide and I into that hidden road now entered to return to the bright world, and without care of having any rest. We mounted up, he first and I the second, till I beheld through a round aperture some of the beauteous things that heaven doth bear. Thence we came forth to re-behold the stars. End of Inferno Canto 31-34 to End of the Divine Comedy Inferno by Dante Alighieri and translated by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Recorded by Marlo Diane, April 6 to 7, 2006, Piscuit West, Prince Edward Island.